absolutely. Um, I like to make men uncomfortable. I enjoy <laughs> making men uncomfortable. <laughs> Whoa, it is important to be able to look into the eyes of a man and say, I am here to bring something that makes you uncomfortable, and it should make you uncomfortable, because you need to change your attitude. The next generation of Pakistan is going to make Pakistan literacy 100%. That you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror and not like the reflection, and then say, maybe there is something wrong with the way I think. That you will perhaps look at yourself in the mirror Do you smell that? We're back in the hangar bay, baby. It has been way too long. My God, I'm so happy to see all you guys in the chat. I feel like I haven't been here in a million years. Things have been a little crazy for old X-Wing lately. Been doing some stuff, having some kids, you know, running around the planet, doing things. I'm just happy to be back. It's It's been so long. I, I missed you guys. I see all of you in the chat. I missed all you guys so much. We're in for a night of debauchery once again here on Late Night. I'm joined tonight by my good friend king's advisors what's up what's buddy? up good to finally finally <sighs> see you live yeah no i'm i'm totally live youtube completely forgot i was alive but uh yeah it's okay we're coming back in uh in a grand fashion tonight we've got plenty to talk about in the star wars universe even though things haven't why am i so gassy right now even though things haven't been all that crazy with bad batch there's a lot in the news definitely some interesting things to talk about with kathleen kennedy the acolyte mm -hmm. Uh, Rebel Moon's going to make its way into the discussion tonight, uh, just because uh, I want to piss off the Snyder fan bros a little bit. Just a little bit. Just just a tiny little bit, if that's okay with it. you. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Boy, uh, I want to say what's up to the chat. John Graber, my buddy, is here. Gatekeeper's Daimyo pop back in as a veteran ace, my brother. Thank you for, for coming back and being a part of the Hangar Gang. Miss you. Love you. What's up, Tim's Talk? What's up, Everscale? Mr. Dangs says congrats. Oh, that's the other thing. Yeah, we're celebrating 30K. We are, yes. Days. Well, you are. You are. I'm not. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're all part of this, right? We're all part of the Hangar Gang. 30K on YouTube. Love it. Uh, Sith Apple is here. What's up, Sith Apple? Good to see you. Oh, where is Matt Rissman? Um, He's possibly going to pop on tonight. I don't know. We'll see. I think he's at uh, dinner getting hammered right now, but we'll see. We'll see. I'd love to have him. Mash is here. What's up, Mash? Scott Westbrook, my good friend for one, two, three, four, says past my bedtime, but wanted to show you we still appreciate you. Thank you, Scott Westbrook. I appreciate it, brother. You guys, you kept me alive through these, uh, these dark few months, if you will. Mm -hmm. Tricky J is here. What's up? Says I've been waiting for late night to come back. It's here. It's now. Ted's Nerd World, member for 28 months. Wow. wow. Stuck with me through the dark period there. I appreciate it. Says congrats, X-Wing. Good to see you, Ted. Always appreciate you stopping by, dude. Brian W is here, the worst golfer on YouTube. Mm -mm. Uh, doesn't say anything uh, Doesn't say anything worth, worth reading. 30 pounds ago? I can't wait to golf that guy. He's going to get wrecked. Best car man is here. What's up? Good to see you. My good friend Star Wars Dog is here. What's up? Jet is here. Good to see you. Big Low is here, says, let's go. Congrats on 30K. Thank you, brother. Member for 11 months in the Hangar Gang. Steiner Math, the man himself. Member for six months, says, hell yeah. 
you need a new uh if you need a new chainmail cap let me know i make chainmail layer rose is here nathan emmert my oldest subscriber says good evening everyone good to see you nathan emmert going strong after all these years my first subscriber oh well, i was gonna ask oldest like in age like he's 100 years old or he's just no up. no yeah he's no he's young he's a young lad he's a young whippersnapper uh, we met right after I went on Star Wars Theory Stream. He messaged me and was like, "Oh man, you were on Theory Stream! I can't believe you responded to me." I'm like, "I'm I'm no one. Like, what's up, man?" And we just became good buddies. Did a couple streams together. We did some 3D print stuff with sabers. It was it was fun. Long time ago. Long time ago. What's up, Big Low? Good to see you. Star Wars Dog member for 17 months says, "Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you." This guy, he lives. I was alive. We talked the whole time. Zacharot is here. What's up? George Lucas's last gray hair. Oh, shit. Is this a Star Wars channel? That's yet to be determined. I don't know. We'll find out, I guess, uh, soon. Al Davis is here. Member for 11 months says congrats on 30K and baby girl. Yes. So to anybody who doesn't know, who maybe like isn't around on the Twitter space or whatever the case maybe isn't in the Discord. Yes, I had a beautiful baby daughter two months ago. And so I've been uh, a little bit more around the house, hanging out with my daughter, um, being part of the real world as opposed to being on YouTube. So thank you for your patience as I've been uh, absent lately. <laughs> real world. Can yeah, you, I, I, know, know. I know what the words like by yeah. themselves mean. Yeah, it's just a thing. Uh, Lombardi1969, what's up, dude? James Kling, good to see you. Steven Brown, what's up? Everscale, I already grabbed you, but hi again. Good to see you. Uh, was that everyone? No, no, we've got a super oh, chat yeah. from Nagarnal. Nagarnal, what's up? I was on a stream with him recently. For $10, says, congratulations and welcome back. Thank you, my brother. It's good to be back. I missed it here. I really did. I missed it a lot. <laughs> Daimio's here, says, what's that? Hi, guys. That's his real voice, by the way. <laughs> uh, okay, who am I missing? Uh, Michael Schwert, like every time. Michael Schwertfeger. Got it. Congrats Ooh. on 30K. Thanks, buddy. I was glad, dude. It's one of those ones where if you mess it up a little bit, it turns into a bunch of different words. <laughs> There's a bunch of different ones. Valiant Archer is here. What's up, brother? King's Advisors member for 15 months says, about freaking time. Yep. Yeah. You know, you can just say it. You're. Yeah, but I wanted to use my, you know, I've I haven't been able to use like four of these member chats. So I just Oh that yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, whatever. Shut up. Tim Sock on your left. What's up, buddy? <laughs> Gatekeepers Daimyo gifted five X Wing memberships, and you know what that means, right? But ding. We gotta play the dirty video. No, but ding is a super chat. We gotta play the dirty video. Well never to flint, I forget I'm on the fing internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's been some time since that's graced the airways sometime sometime thank you so much gatekeepers daimyo i appreciate you yeah see he's 23 he's just a baby he's just a wee baby Mike Porter is here. What's going on, brothers? All these new people popping in. Well, not new people, but new people popping in. Stanley's is here. What's up? Says, congrats on 30K. Thank you, brother. Alan Copeland is here. Good to see you. Good to see you. King Chris says, well, goddamn, I've been meaning to swing by these here parts for a while now. Well, howdy, partner. And thank you for coming back. We sure do appreciate you. Don't forget to stop at the gift shop on the way out. What is up with your camera? Are you I okay? don't know. <laughs> It's, it's real messed up right now. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, while we're waiting for that, uh, Toddzilla for five says, congrats on the baby. Will you be bringing Mrs. X-Wing and baby to ICC in October? No, I will not, unfortunately. Uh, thank you, by the way. But uh, the missus and I are actually leaving for Italy next Friday. So I'm going to be gone okay, just as I start back up. I'm going to be gone again for another two weeks. So I do apologize for that. Um, but when I come back, I, I really want to come back with a vengeance. I've got like six video ideas, which I haven't had for like three years. So uh, I think I think there's some stuff we can do. But uh, Toddzilla, good to see you again. Met him down at uh, ICC Con last year, two years ago. I don't remember. Two years ago. Yeah, I was wearing a, I was wearing a drunk 3PO shirt in line, and we automatically became uh, best friends. So, yeah, it's been that way ever since. Did you sleep with him, too? <sighs> Whoa. What? <laughs> no. Sorry, I've been drinking. 
Okay, so yeah, what you drinking water beers? You drinking water beers? They do the job. Yeah, I guess. Anyways, okay, so how about we talk a little bit of Star Wars? Is there, how are we feeling about Star Wars, Chat? How are you Star feeling Wars about Star Wars? Huh? There's Star Wars stuff to talk about. I, there is. Believe it or not, actually, oh. I was surfing the waves today. Um, it's it's surprising some of the stuff that's. But why am I saying it's surprising? It's not surprising at all oh my god you gotta be kidding me x-wing held me in his Dude. arms it's a bit like carrying a baby it's just nice and compact you know speaking of which lord botha became a youtube now i can't see it on i can't see it on the youtube side Botha, i thought you were a member already i should probably pull up the youtube chat hold up wait a minute i don't even know where my stuff's at Oh, do you have the YouTube site open? Uh, I do, yeah. This is just straight up coming back in membership. Uh, I, I want to make sure I get it right. Fruit. If it comes back, is it welcome back? There we go. Uh, do, 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 do. Where are you, Lord Botha? Welcome to Recruit. All right, new member. Mm -hmm. Or coming back. Anyways, good to see you, Lord Botha. I appreciate you. I'm not going to play that video again. We're going to go easy on the videos today. We got some stuff to talk about. Okay, check this out. We're gonna start as toxically as humanly possible. Dude, I haven't done this in so long. I don't even remember what buttons to push here. Oh yeah, that's right. This is what we're gonna start with. This is what we're gonna start with. Okay, let me cut the music. I just thought this would be an interesting way to kind of come back into the stream space. Uh -huh. Let's try something a little different. 1977, Siskel and Ebert review star wars okay let's watch this let's watch this real quick boom so there you have it your basic intergalactic warfare is the heroic princess is snatched away from the death star by the intrepid space buccaneers space and what's buccaneers. the meaning of it all who knows and who cares star wars became the new box office champion by providing pure 100 percent escapist entertainment it's one of those rare movies that seems to play to every sort of audience gene and bring out the kid in all of us you know, I've seen the picture three times, and that sequence more than that. And every time I see that little fighting sequence, I think I figured out the secret of at least that chunk of the movie. And that is, that looks exactly like what happens at a pinball game that kids love. We're seeing things blow up, and I think the way this movie is shot, different ways, quick action like that, it's like you're putting every person as a pinball player who walks into the theater. Maybe that's why people can see it a dozen times or two dozen times, because it doesn't matter that you know the story. You still have the sound and light, the effects, the explosions, the... Uh the dogfight in outer space. It's just a never ending visual delight. I think oh. it's okay. I want to go back. So we're going to go back to something really important kind of at the beginning of that. I'm going to add somebody else to the, to the panel here real quick. You know, him, you love him. He don't read too good, but we love him. Drunk review. What's up? Right. <laughs> Monocarpal. Monocarpal. Was it yeah. Monocarpal? Monocarpal. That's not it. You said it wrong. Was it? Damn, I looked it up again, too. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. So there you have it. Your basic intergalactic war star by the intrepid space buccaneers. And what's the meaning of it all? Who knows and who cares? Star Wars became the new box office champion by providing pure 100 percent escapist entertainment. What are we doing here? Listening to this uh, old it's man talk about like, Star Wars, man. It's almost like uh, they've known for... 50 years for sorry 47 years so you hear it right there it became a box office smash hit because it was pure escapism entertainment right mm -hmm. and i mean that's always i have i have always said to my core the reason why people love star wars so much is because it takes you somewhere else and you ain't got to think about the real world sure are there undertones everybody wants to make the argument you know george lucas will he put politics in there because you know the vietnam conflict etc cetera, etc cetera, but it just doesn't seem to boil up to the front i don't know what do you think i think smack dab in the middle right there okay i think uh it's it's the hero's journey it's there's a reason that there's nine million variations of this story because it works and when you get off of what works you get the sequel trilogy. So if we know as pure escapism works, why do we think we need to make it with a modern sensibility? And and 
Uh, pray tell, define to me what a modern sensibility is. Modern audience. It's a new term. Is it just they're trying to avoid the trigger word of modern audience? I mean, modern sensibility, yeah, it sounds probably, like yeah. it's, it's the same thing. But what, what the hell is a modern sensibility? Does it just mean that you do these haircuts? The half shave haircuts? It's Yeah, it's probably a combination of that. And um, you know, nobody's you don't white. Have, yeah, you don't have the <laughs> stuff you would see in a movie from the 80s. There's no, uh, what is Sean Connery? There's no Sean okay. Connery grabbing the girl by the arm and say anything to her. You don't have that anymore. Benjamin, member for 28 months, says congrats on 30K X-Wing. Here's to many more. Thank you, brother. A lot of love in the chat for Drunk 3PO. Shocking. <sighs> I don't know. Can can any... Oh, Jesus, you pull yourself. Can any... What are you eating? A pickle? Celery. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, man. This is how much he respects the hangar bay, right? He comes in and he's just crunching on invisible vegetables seriously anybody in the chat can you define to me what a modern sensibility is it's the new term for modern day audience what the I hell is a modern audience it means it, it will relate to the the it will relate to people dealing with stuff in a modern time so okay. political it will address issues like uh diversity and stuff that that's according to hollywood like what Hollywood's so is yoda saying. gonna walk around stumbling and tripping and eating double chip ice cream well and stuff? what did like, they uh, what did they do to luke skywalker in the last jedi <laughs> <laughs> with this green milk you know yeah i don't know it just doesn't make sense so i mean basically the article says it's set in the high republic which has never been depicted in live action and as star amanda steinberg tells our total film in our new issue out on Thursday, April 25th, which features Furiosa. That's another one that got the uh, feminine treatment oh, there. <clears throat> we are the prequel to the prequels, and the prequels have this kind of prestige to them, this monarchical vibe. So one of my main questions going in was, are we going to maintain that sensibility? And yes, in many ways we do, while also incorporating elements that feel really contemporary and relatable. Sorry, I have to... Cool. I have to that word. Yeah, Hope it works what? out for you. Don't worry, Jay was doing it too. <laughs> Mono monocarchal, monarchical. I'm gonna assume it means like a monarchy. It's pertaining to a monarchy, yeah. Which well, I got roasted to death in my chat for that <laughs> word. You got beat up on that one. <laughs> but also, it kind of doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me because it wasn't like a king queen thing. I, I suppose like Anakin and Padme, I guess, because she was kind of a senator, but. I don't, I don't think I understand the tie there. They don't How understand what they're making. You're talking about these people who Leslie Headland did a whole interview about hiring writers that have never seen Star Wars mm -hmm. yeah. because she thought it would be fun. Yeah, so she didn't want these, these other people writers. don't even know okay. what Star Wars is. They're just like, the High Republic is going to go down as the biggest Star Wars uh, disaster. It's, it's one of them as far as like books and comic books you know literature failure that they've ever had behind only what something like the um <laughs> <laughs> some of the books didn't even sell three thousand copies which I mean, is it's, wild it's almost as bad as like making a hotel out of a <laughs> yeah. uh spaceship that no one knows anything about so modern sensibility, something that will attempt to offend absolutely no one and attempt to preach to everyone. Yeah, that's I it. like that. That's that's it. actually really good. Yeah, hundred percent. And sad at the same time. We don't want to offend anyone, but we want to tell you how wrong you are about the world. I am gonna copy that because I really like that definition. So I mean, we're gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I don't know if you guys are gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Uh, Jay, I think we're planning on doing a show about it. I might have um, to sail the seas for that. You, yeah. you mean the movies. Uh, yeah, I just, I really don't. So we heard Leslie Headland talking about the show. We heard her say, basically, the most important thing is that she feels like her queer coded ideology makes it into the movie and she wants ample representation. And the whole mm -hmm. important aspect of the show was representation. I don't know she if you were with us, Kings. Do you remember when we sat down and we watched the interview with all the actors and actresses? 
they were like, check out our Acolyte feature it. And all they did was talk about race for 30 minutes. I mean, it sounds exactly like all of the <laughs> press for Rings of Power. Every single yes. interview from Rings of Power from like three months out forward was, was the uh, dwarf lady going, it's so great to finally be able to play a black woman in this world and make everyone realize that we exist. Like, no I had no idea. No you <laughs> see the article where it says the acolyte is making it safe for black nerds. Yes, yes, I did. That's incredible too, because I, uh, I mean, what do I know? Whatever. But hey, check it out. Star Wars blue milk hits shelves ahead of May fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Drink that. is being offered in half gallon jugs at Cub, Hy-Vee, Coborn, Walmart, and Target. What are Cub, Hy-Vee, and Coborns? That They're probably Yankee things. things. Or, uh, sorry, Northern things. Or uh, uh, Canadian things. Aren't you in, like, North Carolina? What do you mean Yankee things? Uh, Yankee is north of the Mason-Dixon line. Oh, okay. Yankee, North Carolina, come on. Yeah. I mean, at least it's, at least it's Luke and Vader. And not, like, Reva and Obi-Wan <laughs> or something. You know what I mean? On the cover? The funny Wonder thing is, it's like at Galaxy's Edge, when you get the blue milk, they have the picture of the, uh, uh, the animal that those he, things that he, the sand people, uh, what the frick are they, what are they yeah. called? Banthas. Yeah, they, so they get the blue milk from Banthas. I was like, that's, I didn't want to know that. You didn't know that? <laughs> is that a thing? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's Bantha milk. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, we didn't know that. We didn't want to know that. That's the mystery of the blue milk. Walking around the sand all day. Probably their boobas are just dragging on the ground. And they're like, let's milk those. <laughs> Nothing like some sandy blue titty milk in the morning. Just that really gets you ready to... Green milk is worse. Moisture. Sea creatures. It was, dude, honestly, both of those, both of those milks at the park were disgusting. They're like, it's like a snot texture. It's really oh, gross. Oh, disgusting. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like it is going to be that same blue milk because it said it was previously available exclusively at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Man, they're reaching out. They're going really? retail. Really? Because that's not real milk. It's more of a... Yeah, it's like a... It, yeah, it tastes weird. Non-refrigeratable fruit right. smoothie. Oh. I don't know. It's, yeah, gross. it's pretty gnarly. But anyways, if you want, I wish there's an ingredients on there that you could pull up. But I probably could find it. Mm. Galaxy's Edge Blue Milk ingredients. They were um, the blue and green milk. If you stayed at the Star Cruiser, you could fill up unlimited. Oh yeah, it's know. just as bad as you'd think. Is it? So apparently, dragon fruit blue dry blend. What? Yeah the the official blue milk flavoring is dragon fruit, pineapple, lime, and watermelon. Dude, look at the stabilizers. These are Star Wars words: hydroxypropyl methylescaloska, locust bean gum. I don't know what that is, dude. Oh boy, Arabic fruit puree. Yeah, this is pretty gnarly. I'll just have a glass of whole milk. I'm good. But there it is, if you want it. Blue milk. God, the, green, it the thing is, the green milk looks like infection. <laughs> it doesn't it's look bit, green. It's a bit pussy. It looks it? worse when you, when you get it. <laughs> Jeez. Put like that squig. I like that. I would have been down for some blue raspberry. I love blue raspberry. <laughs> a flavor no one other than like a nine year old has You used ever to be wanted. able to get it. You should be able to get it with alcohol. I don't think they sell it anymore. Yeah, the they alcohol. put rum in it. I bet, I it, tried drown, it. I I bet it drowns out the rum. No, dude. It was just like snot and and crappy rum. That's pretty much all it tasted like. It was disgusting. Anyway, bottom shelf of the bottom shelf. Yeah. Dude, we blew through like three topics there we weren't supposed to blow through. That was way too quick. It's been so long since I've hosted. I, I just don't know what to do these days. All right. So Star Wars Outlaws is coming gonna out. Jay, you're going to play this, right? You saw all my, you saw all my Star Wars stuff. Uh-huh. <coughs> what did you think about the Acolyte 
um, that their their lightsaber duel is going to beat the Darth Maul duel. I had that. Uh, oh, 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 I know. I know. Bullshit. <laughs> There's just simply no shot. I mean, so, so, but here's the thing. Here, all right, here's the thing. Not just trying to not to be. This is what happened. So, and correct me if I'm wrong. The they they did the marketing for this like completely wrong. So they started off before they even, <coughs> excuse me, before they even did anything. They were like, this is about diversity. This is about black nerds feeling safe. This mm -hmm. show is going to have the, it's going to be women centric. We're going to have Hesley Ledlin. You're going to love it, right? So Hesley's that's the number one. Queer, Boom. Queer, so now you're queer, like, queer. well, we don't want to see this. This is terrible. Now, then, then the freaking South Park episode comes out. Okay. So you got put a chick in it, make it lame and gay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I got celery stuck in my throat. All right. And so. <laughs> So that whole thing was about Kathleen Kennedy. Put a chick in it, make it lame and gay. So now they released the teaser trailer for the Acolyte. And it got ratioed to crap. Like people are like, I don't want to care. I don't want to see it anymore. So now Star Wars is at this place where they're like, we got to do some damage control and get people talking about this. So now they make these ridiculous statements like this, that it'll do better than the Darth Maul fight scene. They actually, I read an article on my live stream today saying, guys, Kathleen Kennedy isn't woke. She actually fights for, like, I don't know if you were there when I was reading that X-Wing. Oh, I but heard about that. She was like, she actually fought, you have to fight her to get her to do woke stuff in her Star Wars. And you're like, oh, shit. It's really crazy. So it's like, there's a lot of damage control right now because Lucasfilm as a whole hasn't really you know, ha hasn't Succeeded. really hit a home run in a but little you don't, while. You don't do damage control by trying to, like, basically, the way we see it, a lot of the, like, you know, um, disenfranchised fans, that it's going to be better than The Phantom Menace. Like, I'm sorry, but Duel of the Fates is probably the greatest lightsaber fight of all time. It's always... That's what I'm it's, saying. It's, like, it's the difference between that one and, and uh, uh, Duel of the Heroes, mm -hmm. or oh, Battle of the Heroes. Uh, like you just can't beat it. They literally had to slow down you and McGregor and Ray Park because they were going too fast. Well, and you're I saying, have, what I saw saying these trailer? things, they're saying these things to drum up interest in the show because mm -hmm. they, I think they're actually seeing numbers now of people not interested okay. in the show. I have. Well, they haven't done it. I don't chance. mean to cut you, but they haven't done this for any of their. They haven't done this type of weird damage control for any of their Disney Plus show, unless I've missed it. Like, Andor came out. They're just like, yep, this is a prequel to Rogue One. It's going to be yeah. this guy. It's going to be different. It's going to be gritty. It's going to be this. Okay, cool. Kenobi, it's like, oh, man, it's going to be the, oh the fight of the century, right? Like, uh, the that rematch of the century. should have been the rematch of the century. Right. That's what, that's what they... But they didn't compare it to anything else. They just said, you're going to yeah. see Hayden, you're going to see Ewan, and you're going to see a new character. So now, like, and then no. That to be fair, rematch of the century is kind of. They kinda didn't come out and say this lightsaber duel will be better than yeah. you and McGregor like episode three or anything like that. Yeah. So it's like I now it's like they're coming out and it's like we're gonna top. We're gonna try to top the Darth Maul. It's like come on, man. And now it's like Kathleen Kennedy isn't woke. She fights for not to be woke like these articles are coming out and you're like what are you talking about i believe about? that when my shit turns purple and smells like rainbow sugar. i just think like it all goes back to the uh high republic is where they dumped everything that they wanted to do we have the mm -hmm. trans non-binary jedi twins that Rocks. are in the high republic you have the asexual pilots that they promote that's in the high republic you have the first gay um, in the High Republic, and even in the young, so much the young Jedi cartoon series, which is based on the High Republic, public, they have gay children with Ahmed Best. So, you know, Lord Botha for four ninety nine says, if you run out of topics, you can always call someone and call them gay. <laughs> Thanks, I buddy. Have Ryan W says, X-Wing, did you get what I sent you? It's not a warrant. I haven't been to my P.O. box. <laughs> I have a better been to chance. My PO. I'm afraid to open that thing. Like, I'm going to just open my P.O. box and a bunch of baby powder is going to come flying oh out of it or something.
I have a better chance of Natalie Portman walking through that door right now <laughs> in, in the in the uh, Geonosis clothing than anything in the Acolyte topping the Duel of the Fates. Yeah, dude, we saw the trailer, man. It's Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Like, they're doing, it's it's full-blown, nope. like, yeah, I know it didn't happen. Which is right. unfortunate. I was, I was actually great. pulling for you right yeah, there, buddy. that would have been awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I just I don't I don't see the show as working. I, I'm excited to watch it just because this one I don't care about. Oh, when be... we did the Kenobi show, Jay, I was heartbroken that entire yeah, time. Yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, because that was just like, dude, that was that was supposed to be the the big comeback. <laughs> well, especially because it was after <laughs> was it right after Chapter 16, like two or three months later. No, we had Book of Boba Fett. Did after. We had Boba Fett first. Okay. Yeah, and then we had Kenobi, and Boba Fett was just like. Order. I just tried to brush off Boba Fett off my shoulders like, Whoa, dude, Robert Rodriguez screwed them on that one. But then Kenobi came out and I'm like, oh, OK, yeah, we're actually screwed. <laughs> we're in a lot yeah, of trouble like here, kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. OK, here we go. This pretty is pretty bad. This is the one, <laughs> is the one we were looking for. Bad. I just wish that we'd go somewhere where we haven't gone before. Yeah, there it is. Captain no, Kennedy, not a woke yeah. warrior. This is just mind-boggling to me. I mean, everything, absolutely everything, has been has been taken over. Even to the point that kind of one of the last bastions was Mandalorian got taken over by Bo-Katan. Yep. So if you think about every show that's come out, some would argue Boba Fett was a male-led show, but it wasn't. It was the book of uh, Fennec Shand. She had to do yeah. everything for him because oh, yeah. he'd gone soft. It was like. Ugh. And, he, and every single question he had, because Phoenix Shen hadn't been sitting on Tatooine for ever. She just showed up. She she didn't know anything that Boba Fett didn't know. And yeah. so Boba Fett just sat there asking her question after question after question. And she had an answer. From where? This is um... Junk Man. Have you ever tried making your own content? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see It's you, a man. live stream. I don't know. What are you going to ask you? Um, this is all that stuff that they're saying. Like, they need to explain this. If you could share my screen, whatever. This is a children's yeah. cartoon for like K through four, fourth grade. And they're adding like, you know, like gay characters uh, for that's children. insane to me. Like, it's a that's, children's that's not show. It, it doesn't need it. It doesn't like if you want to add gay characters in the movies and stuff. Fine. What's the meat of the article though? Like, what are they actually doing? Is this supposed to be like a thirteen-year-old lesbian couple in the picture? What is it? I haven't watched the show, so I don't know. So, oh, no. if anybody spoilers. has an answer in the chat, we want to know. Yeah, I. The thing is, it's like, um, yeah. The first short of the Ooh, second episode, wait, NASA's race day, introduced the parents of young Jedi's pilot friend, Nash Durango. And she has two moms who are a couple cheering their daughter as she wins the race. So there's the wait, two wait, moms. Isn't this, this is a TV show about Padawans, right? Learners. Yeah. Yeah. So why are the parents there? Because she's in a race. She's a race. Parents but, are know, there to man. support her. I don't know what to do it. So then, okay, then why did they go get Shmi? If the parents can just come hang out and hang out with their kids. Well, I mean, it's important to remember that this is a kid show. I don't know if continuity is really going to be. I just don't like, like adding here. sexual stuff to like, yeah, Absolutely. children's shows. It's like. That... Well, what's the target demographic for that audience? It's got to be like two to seven. I already told you and you didn't listen. <coughs> kindergarten through fourth grade yeah that's not i don't know what ages are what's how old are you in fourth uh, grade kindergarten is your five seven eight i think uh. um what he most, never listens man the sad thing knows? about this is the most popular <laughs> show case. in the world <laughs> is uh fuck you, Rob, is um bluey and as far as I know, because I have not watched a single episode of Bluey, there's none of that shit in it. No, it's and a kid show. Like, yeah, it's about a dog. Like, hey, maybe <laughs> there's maybe there's a clue here in how to make a popular TV show. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but, I mean, hey, if it doesn't have the message, we can't put it out, right? I really want to see, and I think it's available out there, like, what is the honest-to-God formula that is necessary to get your funding for DEI? And does it yeah, change it's, when it's it comes to, to kids' groups? That would be my question. If you're making a kid show, is it different than an adult show? Here we got Big Rob for five says, according to credible sources, King sits when he pees. Look, why are you guys so obsessed with that? Sometimes it's been a long day and you just want to sit down. <laughs> Stupid! <laughs> <laughs> well, looky who! Alive Hello? and well, Moff Risman. <laughs> wow, he lives. How are you? He lives. Is it a late night? How is there it a late is? night without me, by the way? You're I, here. I, I sent it to you 15 minutes before we started, Ma. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. Sorry. I was out. I was out. How are y'all doing? Good oh, doing well. Good. How are you doing? Oh, life is good. Lamenting over the complete woke pile of trash that Star Wars is now, and then trying to it's... figure out exactly what needs to happen for it to get fixed. I don't, I don't know that there's an answer. Well, the Acolyte will be good. We're all right. Yeah. Are you it's pretty good. excited for that? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You don't feel like this is going to be like another Book of Boba Fett level failure? Oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so much fun to watch. <laughs> Listen, you all know, the only thing I'm looking forward to is Andor Season 2, and they're like... You and know, especially uh, 20... Tales, of, uh, em Tales of the Empire. Well, Tales of the Empire, I will enjoy. Everyone else will be like, oh, here we go again. You know, it's a Filoni special. But as far as live action goes, and or season two, you know, Gilroy said, yo, these 24 hours of things, this is the best thing I've ever done in my life. All this stuff. I'm like, yeah, they're just teasing us. Gilroy yeah. saying that about Andor season two? He did say it. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, you know, he I got to watch the first season. Track, so. You think... haven't watched, the, Jay, you still haven't finished the first season. I haven't, I've only saw its first two episodes. I haven't watched any of it. I need to, I need, oh. I don't have Disney Plus anymore. I got to get, I got to find it somewhere. It's slow. It's a slow show. It's a very, it's, it's, very slow show. But people that Which, I respect do say they they really do like it. So. It is the least. It's the least offensive. Star Wars. It's the least offensive, and it certainly has the best actors. I'll tell you that much. Definitely has it, the best actors. It has the best actors, and it has them acting with the best writing. And it's not only just Gilroy, but the writing and the directing and everything they did in Andor. Again, it was like, oh, it's boring. And I, I'm not going to go into all that bullshit again. I get it. I get it. We've already done that. But I'm just saying, it's a really good television series. Because, again, this is TV. We're talking about TV. You yeah. want the best TV you can find? I don't think it gets better than Gilroy. Brian W says, slow. Kind of like this stream in X's golf swing. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your mouth, Brian. Ooh, Shut your fire. dirty whore mouth. Gatekeepers Daimyo for two says Tales of the Simpire. Mm. Well, he's excited for it. Look, you know, here's my only problem with the show is that they're branding it as Tales of the Empire, and then it's going to be about Morgan Elsbeth. Well, I mean, she again, the Asian Night Sister. Like, what does this have to do with anything? I understand Barris Offie, but can we get like a Tarkin story or something? Maybe she's dead. Like Morgan Elsbeth? Is she? She's dead now. She, well, she died now. in Ahsoka. She yeah, died in yeah. Ahsoka. But once again, we have a TV show or a movie from Star Wars, from Lucasfilm, coming out, telling us something that we already know how it ends. I've never understood that argument, dude, though. Because, like, I love the prequels. I know what happens to Darth Vader. I think that's different, though. I think telling... And, and I like Andor. Skywalker I know what happens story. in Rogue One, you know. I don't mind hearing the story. The thing is, like with the prequels, it was like, but it's they, we they promoted it as like we already knew like what we were getting into when we watched it. It's like you're gonna watch the what we've been and and like the original did have like hints of, uh, you know, and he was a good friend. He was yeah, the he best the star Wars. fighter in the galaxy. So yeah. it was like they were telling little bits and pieces, mm -hmm. and you're just like, you know, uh, even Amparu was like. Oh, he's got too much of his father in him. That's yeah. what I'm afraid of. And so it's like, okay, yep. so tell us this whole story. Some of these origin stories, like, and just to use as an example, the uh, the new Transformers movie that's coming out is oh, like has no base, one. like has nothing. Yeah. Like they it they just like they just pulled it out of the wind, and it's like Optimus Prime and 
Megatron were friends working in the garbage dump, and then they oh, had to save the universe. Bad. <laughs> they got superpowers to transform. Let's go. It's like, what? Well, the worst thing for me about Transformers 1 isn't the their backstory, right? Because the, there's parts of it that is true, right? I mean, where they came from and, and what happened Megatron. before they were Optimus and Megatron. It's the whole... They... They Super Mario MCU'd it, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. that, that that trailer that trailer was just like it was like a comedy show, and I'm like, yeah, yep. I'm like, okay, yes, the original Transformers had a comedic element to it, of course, right? Yeah. And then I, I then of course the the director had to come out in a, in an interview and oh, say, well, here's what we were trying to do, you know, don't worry, you know, as the as the movie goes on, it's gonna be, you know. A little bit more heavy and things are going to happen i'm like i'm like yeah but you put out a trailer that's supposed to hook us yeah is exactly it be, is it is marketed as a kids this. movie not not come out and, and say hey it's not what I think we it's wanted marketed to show it as it was like, never marketed as a kids movie but what we saw is clearly a kids movie yeah. a kids movie not even like a young adult it's a kids movie it's a kid like, it way, looks like quick. it belongs on nickelodeon Ted's Nerd yeah. World gifted one membership. Thank you, brother, so much for the gift. I'm, I'm going to play it since I didn't do it for the other one. He said clip. I forget I'm on the fucking internet. No, oh, we're going to. Jay's here. He's going to get offended. We're going to offend his sensibilities. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Uh, Lord Botha for four ninety nine says, Morgan Elsbeth sounds like a name Jay gets memed for saying wrong. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, and also, as far think, as... Though, as far as Tales of the Empire goes, I'm wondering if this is one of those things that got delayed because of the strikes. Because clearly we would have wanted this to come out before Ahsoka Season 1. I don't know if we wanted it to come out. Well, yeah, I <laughs> keep on that. But if we were going to get it, some would say you would want to have had it before It would have made sense happened. between 2 mm -hmm. and 3, right? Or, yeah, or between, yeah, yeah, exactly. 3 and Ahsoka. So because, I think the yeah. real the real problem here is that not that we already know how the story ends. It's just that people don't give a shit about Morgan Elsbeth. Yep. And honestly, I don't really give a shit about Baron Offie either. Either. Well, Baron Offie. Baron Offie. Baron Offie. Baron Offie might have an interesting story, you know, with the Inquisitors and all that. But but they they fucked the Inquisitors up so bad in in Kenobi. Yeah, Kenobi. Yep. Like who's really wanting more Inquisitors? Like in Inquisitors were really cool. Like the the height of their coolness was Jedi Fallen Order. Like they were pretty cool. And yeah. then Kenobi and uh uh Jedi Survivor came out and it's just like, "Oh, they're they're nothing. They're not." You should have just used all. that chick from Fallen Order for Kenobi. She was stellar. I love Yes. Her. Yeah. Second sister, what I can never remember the numbers. The, the most surprising thing to me about it was when we when they put out the Tales of the Empire trailer, there was no Reva. I thought for sure they were gonna jam oh. Reva down our throats again. In the I'm, like, I'm like, I'm like, they gave us Marak. Marak was there, you know. They they did some other things. They did the the guy the human in the fart from, from Ahsoka Tales of the Jedi. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, really? They didn't they didn't they didn't give us a Reva? I'm like, wow, they, maybe they're saving it. Maybe they're saving this misery for later. But I was very surprised. Very surprised. Uh, no, that's just his general. That's just kind of how he operates. I think it's, he's uh, KG right below that is a hundred. I think he's. I think he's playing Snake. I'm not a thousand percent sure, but yeah, I don't. Know. I never saw the appeal of Barris at all either. Well, I'm playing I'll Snake. Do, you want to know what I'm doing? That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'll show you. The appeal with Barris is is basically that that was so this guy right here. You're watching being, sea of this, videos? this guy. <laughs> look, look, this guy. This is one of my favorite sea of Thieves. This guy's being boarded. He sleeps on the wheel. They don't see him, and they start to repair the wheel. So <laughs> they don't know what's going on. That he's literally like asleep oh down God, there. That, see you, they see you. It's pretty funny. That's what I'm doing. Sorry. <laughs> 
I'm addicted to this game. Like no one's. I know, I know, I know. I know. Yeah. We love you for it. It's kind of like even hell divers. The uh, I'm dude. I'm so burnt out on hell divers right now. What? Oh, I'm so oh, wow. I'm so burnt out on that game, dude. dude. The ATA Juice divers, no more juice divers. It's done. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll come back into it in my own time. But anyways, the appeal with Barris was that that was a huge turning point for Anakin, right? Because of that whole thing. That's why mm -hmm. you lose Ahsoka as a, you know as an apprentice so that's interesting for me because it ties back into anakin so i'd be interested to see what happens to her you know whatever maybe justice gets but you know she's gonna know immediately that because i they're probably gonna do some sort of oh anakin or vader tested all of his uh inquisitors and he's gonna fight her in a manner and she's gonna go oh my god you're anakin skywalker because of the way he fights or something like that yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's I don't exactly know. What's and, gonna happen. and Kay says that, you know, to be fair, I'm not big into Clone Wars. I totally get it. That's why animation is perfect for these like routes of storytelling. Yeah. It's just do it in a cartoon. And then adults who are interested in it, they can watch it. And kids who are interested in it, they can watch it. And if you don't, it's not a big deal because it's a cartoon. It's off to the side. The problem is when you make these major, major live action Star Wars shows and you tell a story that nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> Well, and, and, and what Caleb was just talking about reference, you know, Barris and Anakin and the fact that we seen in that the trailer, you know, yeah. male before your new master mm -hmm. and then Vader walks out. I, I think that's and that's, she like looks up too. like, yeah, she I think feels that's something point, she's felt before. I think that's the point of it. He's like, he'd be like, oh, you you're here. You you Which I, we I know. Oh, there's only what two people that know that he or I guess three. That know that he's Anakin, Palpatine, uh, Thrawn, and uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. Tarkin, though. Yeah, they get that right. There's three people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. I can't think of yeah, any. So I don't. I don't. I don't. I. I would Pro imagine probably the fucking that. doctor. What's her name? I would imagine oh, she's God. not destined to survive. But so again, it's like, is it interesting? I'm like, all right, we didn't think we were getting it. It's May Fourth. They'll give mm -hmm. us. You know, all six of them. Okay, it's fine. It's okay. It's fine. I, I don't know. Oh, God. Barris will cut <laughs> off another part of Vader's mask that hasn't been done and see Anakin's face. Poetry. But I mean, oh, I think they've so. already I think cut so. off both sides. So what? She's going to cut off the forehead? I recognize that forehead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for for me, if, if it's like it gets to this point where, you know, the Grand Inquisitor's like, meet your new master or whatever... And and somehow they didn't communicate this whole time that they're like making Barrett's Safi. You know, you feel like you would feel like you know the Grand Inquisitor and Vader would be like having a conversation about their recruits. Yeah. You know, hopefully it's not like oh it's a surprise and Vader's oh, like this no, Barrett. Oh, like, I must have missed job. that one in the resume pile. Yeah. <laughs> didn't tell you about it. I, I was like I, I'm very curious to see how they play. I mean, he'll probably stab her and she'll survive because they have you know weak lightsabers look who's in the gutter now <laughs> that is one of the most iconic lines in star wars history not for a good reason obi-wan no, I, I actually think obi-wan i actually think it's <clears throat> you'll be landed gentry oh my god landed gentry <laughs> you remember that jay uh nope that was mandalorian when uh, they were talking about giving him a parcel of land, you'll be landed gentry. I'm like this I, is this I, is I, actually I, in Star Wars right now. Let, you'll be landed rest, gentry with, let him rest with in pirates. Peace, he didn't write that shit. Let him rest in peace, but he didn't write, he didn't write that. Shit. Christmas. Ah, uh, Mando and Grogu getting a film. This is such a bad idea. Uh, again, I'll believe when I see it. The do you remember? Of, do you remember how three ended with the Looney Tunes? Da -da 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 -da, beep. And it was like little Grogu in the corner. I'm like, this made it past so many people. Yeah. yeah. Before it went on to Disney Plus. What are you doing? How much you want to bet Jack Black will be in the film? I hate you right now. If Lizzo there's, and Jack Black are in that film, I'm burning the theater down there's, before I leave. There's a near zero chance of Jack Black. Um, hey, oh, throwback. I don't know. I, se I seem to know some people that, that are in the name. movie. No. Well, you really do he's this really in the film. How? Well, I don't know. It's just a rumor. I can't say anything. He always pulls this crap. I have to. <laughs> NDAs, man. I know. And then half the time he's right. And I'm like, God damn it. 
But then know, half the time he's wrong, you're like, oh, thank God. Yeah, I got to balance it out so people don't think I'm like selling all their secrets. <laughs> yeah. I by don't know. Time, by the time, time 2026 rolls around, who? no one's going to care. I mean, Nobody like, cares now. About, I mean, no about Baby Yoda. In 2026. They oh, blew yeah, it yeah. so I, big I with him. Rifson is, Rifman, sorry, is Ripman, listen to me. <laughs> Is a hundred percent correct. The uh, the time for Baby Yoda has passed, and they yep. are squeezing that thing uh, for whatever. Like right, like um, he, he, right now in Galaxy's Edge, it is just they have like storefronts of Baby Yoda stuff yeah. that's well, just sitting like there. The well, that way. You know, anyone that's that wanted Grogu stuff has got Grogu stuff now. There's no yeah, it doesn't not, change. There's, yeah, there's nothing else they're gonna make unless. They've got to bring him. They've got to do what they did with Groot, where he suddenly becomes, you know, a, a, a teenager in his species, and so that they can milk him again. Mando would be but, dead by the time that guy was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's nothing well, left to do. Gets, with. Gonna be like, oh, there's some so kind if, of ritual if, where Yoda's species goes into a swamp Yoda, and comes out. If Baby Yoda gets a lightsaber and starts doing stuff. Will that reignite Baby Yoda love? Not if he doesn't speak. They ruined Mando. With Mando season three, they ruined him. I yeah. don't like Mando anymore as a character after season three. And not because of him, but because of the show. Like, I just don't mm -hmm. like him as a character anymore. I used to have him up on my wall as one of my helmets. I took him down. I'm like, God, I don't like to look oh, at that wow. thing. Yeah. Well, and, and I never bought the Lego set. They also seem to have ruined the baby Grogu getting a lightsaber. Again, yeah, the, by picking the chain mail. Was Book of Boba Fett, right? With the whole, you must choose. Yeah, I'm chain like, mail. <laughs> why does he have to choose? That, that's an even dumber I, I, thing. I, I, oh, okay, Dime Store Luke, again, we're doing it. <laughs> we, are we doing it again? I'm, I'm, I'm like, really? I'm writing that down, too. I'm like, come on, man. It's bad. So yeah, the question is, do people care enough? And see, the problem I think Disney's really going to run into right now, or Lucasfilm, I should say, as a whole, is that even after the sequels, there was still the opportunity that if a movie comes out, you're still going to get butts in seats because it's a Star Wars movie. Yeah, and like exactly. people are going to go regardless. But now that it's a Mando Grogu movie, everybody knows what it's about, how badly season three was handled. They don't have that nice buffer anymore. I'm going to be really interested to see what the numbers on that movie are. Because I don't think they're going to be good. They'd have to do some then, uh, sort of 180 with everything to get anyone interested in it. They would. Have to pull I, a chapter I, I, I hate to say now. it. They would have to bring in Luke Skywalker, and there could be an adventure where Ahsoka is in there. And like, if they bring in like all those people and like the Avengers assemble, like I predicted from day one, yeah, then uh, that might be their only hope. I, I, yeah. So. I mean, well, that who's was not going to go? Who's not going to go to the theater to see Luke Skywalker? They're going to they're going to fight Thrawn with. Uh... Oh God, that's a mismatch like... fight too. Like it doesn't really make sense. I mean, Thrawn he wins tactically in large scale battles. I mean, of course he has some small ones too, but the whole the whole thing just doesn't make sense. I think it would have made sense if there was somebody like a character that maybe was related to a royal family that was from Alderaan that had a whole bunch of beef with the Empire that could create a rebel fleet or at least a maybe even a faction of the New Republic that would go fight against Thrawn when nobody else was listening. That would make sense. But what do you what have now? What should be talking about? I don't know. Surely no one would be smart enough to write a character like that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is like in in the Mando, like you said, like who so who will be the bad guy in the Mando movie? Is it just going to be some made up? Is it going to be Thrawn? Because they're all in the it's, same universe, you know. Is it yeah, like yeah? Thrawn? But they yeah. they've gone off and now they're playing freaking Turner and Hooch. Yeah, they're go they're gonna go. Well, do that's their what own I'm saying. Concept. Like, is it gonna be like? It's gonna well, be I've some got, game. I've got Baby Yoda with me, and I gotta get to work. Oh, I got like a, I got a commission here. Let's go. I got to be a bounty hunter. So let me yep. go find this guy and just, you know, go, it's go fight be, the red sun or something. Yeah, or whatever. They, just, they like destroyed the only something. connection that Mando had to the new Republic, which was Cara Dune. That was the only reason he would have ever cared about the new Republic was Cara Dune. Or the, no, the, they got gone. the, the, um, the pilot. Carson. Carson. No, Carson no, no, no. He doesn't give a Carson shit about Carson. 
I I think they're not done with Moff Gideon, right? I I think Ugh. I think Moff Gideon will return. I think they're again. We've just seen him in all those cloning tubes and the whole mustache, no mustache, and Giancarlo is still like, well, I don't know if I'm dead, and I'd love to be. You motherfucker's not dead. They're gonna bring him back. Yeah. Like he he is he the sure has most a lot villainous. Of, uh, thing. Contracts going on. To I can ask him next week. Yeah, ask him. Let us know. Any freedom to do it, and, and he'll say, "Well, I'd love to come back, but I haven't gotten the call yet." And like, and is it just me, or did season three completely snuff Gideon for me? Like, he's no longer threatening. He's just like this stupid puppet. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, bad. The, the like, clones, I think, the cloning thing, I think, really ruined it because it really was like, there's no, there's no um, threat anymore. You can just come back whenever you want. Yeah. There's no, there's no chance. Oh my God, you're gonna die because you'll just pop back up tomorrow and do body. I just remember like season one when that dude, the Tie Fighter, comes down and folds and he hops out and he's like, "You have something I want." And there's all the troopers out there. He's like, "This guy's dangerous." And then dude is dangerous. he just cuts himself out with the dark saber. Like yeah. that was. It was cool. He was that was a cool villain. I was like, "Ah, oh, it's a normal guy, but he's a total badass." You know, he's a thrown pipe. I don't think we've seen the last of them, and I'm not. I'm not. I don't I like him anymore. Sad about that. <laughs> I just don't like him anymore. I don't but know. It, it, the reason why we don't like him anymore is because they just screwed the pooch on Mando season three. It, yeah. it, it isn't so Boy, much a Moff Gideon problem. It's just a Mando season three problem. Yeah, three tanked. Like I feel like a lot of different storylines. Um, Gatekeepers Daimyo for ten says the nostalgia effect is long gone. I did not see the box office numbers doing well for the upcoming films. I'm more interested to see if they even advertise the numbers. They're not going to advertise the numbers. So what are you if, crazy? If the Mando movie tanks, is that the end of Kennedy? Because I thought I, I my prediction was Indy, and I was wrong. Yeah, a lot of people were saying Indy well, was going to be the one, and she was what, supposed to be out in March. Have we seen her at all? Has she come out? I, I think she's I think Not she's since done. she got booed at Star Wars just, Celebration. She hasn't yeah, been out. I th and the and the indie stuff in uh, July, but I think she's just writing out the contract. They're I think they've moved on. That she's writing out her contract. I, th I think her contract is up in October. Yeah, right? That I mean, they're uh, I, I think it's sometime in the fall. Yeah, I, I think they're going to go announce a new president, or they're going to link up a bunch of their movie studios and. They are just, uh, they're going to go, they're going to throw some party in September and say, she has been the head, she was the first female head. She's yeah, incredible. Get... And then let her ride out in the sunset to do her female production. Company. I, th I think yeah. for Disney was, they had the proxy war and that was mm -hmm. Bob Iger's folk. He could care. I, I think at the moment he could have cared less what they were Good. doing. And now that that is over and the damage is all, you know, like there was a the lot of damage because he was like, we're going to stop making all these Marvel films. What are they doing? We're going to stop doing this. Then the Forbes article just dropped. That was like, yeah, Lucasfilm ha has only made half of what yep. they mm -hmm. spent. Um, so that's got to change. Lucasfilm is like the freaking hotel disaster, the Willow disaster, the Indiana Jones disaster. I mean, it's like, how long do they keep going? until you know it's like hey we got to change leadership i think i think what's probably going to happen so lord both says she'll retire soon i think what's going to happen is she, we've been this, saying that for five years i think i think I what's going is, well, to be fair, fair, to be fair to be to no, the beginning it was fine. she's going to get a ray movie out she's going to get a ray movie out and 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 bro, bro that movie is metaphorically never, passed the torch is never going to happen i that pray that you're right brother never going to happen i really hope so, that. i, I got to share something about that oh god I, I don't know if this is real or fake but i did get an email from somebody uh saying hey man i i work on the production set over in london and that Ray movie is going to be canceled. I'm just telling you right now. And I, that I Ray movie is never. I'm not saying I don't know who this person is. I don't. I so I get troll emails all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, this, that, and this. But he sent me like a, a photo of like the different production stuff, and he goes, "I just want you to know, like, it they they have bigger problems over there that they're working on, and this Ray movie is going to just quietly be done." Yeah. And, and the bigger the bigger it's a lot thicker than i thought it was gonna be 
Like, please take it with a grain of salt. Rumor. It was just a wild email. I looked at it. I, I barely talked about it on my live stream. I just replied. I was like, that's crazy, man. That was it. People send me stuff all the time. That's not true, but it's funny it's that I hear other videos people. videos out tomorrow morning. Oh, Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> <That's all YouTubers. laughs> listen, Linda, yeah. honey, listen. It, I don't think that movie is ever going to happen. But the bigger problem is, if you think about where we're at right now, there is absolutely nothing in production that we know of for future Star Wars. I feel like I'm Mike Zero. So future Star Wars. <laughs> future Star Wars <laughs> projects. Get but, that dartboard but, but behind all, you, man. All, all I'm saying <laughs> is Andor 2 is in post. We know that. And so that'll come out next year. And they'll give us something else animated because I think that's being worked on and we'll we'll understand what that is. But other than that, there ain't shit in production right now. Which is right? wild. It, so, so in regards to Disney Plus Star Wars content, what are they doing? Nothing. It seems like absolutely nothing. Well, Disney seems to be having an issue across the board because did they just uh, hire a new guy to be in charge of the... Um, uh, what's it called? Walt Disney Pictures, their production company that is actually the arm that produces their actual movies. Like, if it's not going to be a Disney movie, this company is the one that actually distributes it. They just hired a new guy for that. Yeah. They uh, they've canceled and moved like 19 different Marvel movies. They just came out with the first good news we've ever heard of the um, uh, what's that? The Blade movie. So they're they got issues up and down broadway like it's terrible well i mean and i think i i think if kennedy actually does retire still let's let alan bergman do it we don't need another kennedy we don't need a replacement yeah right? I, there's, there's not going to be another president of, you're just going to consolidate yeah it's going to be they're because they'll consolidate uh blue's film into walt disney pictures 100 percent. well that doesn't 100%. seem like a good idea well, it's, it's, I don't I mean, think what, it's would be better, what would be a better idea? <sighs> Hire a new CEO. <laughs> I don't know. At a Lucasfilm. I just think. Start you putting know, out more stuff. Well, yeah, start putting out more stuff. But here's the really important part. And this is something that I, I don't think they're getting. Like the zeitgeist that goes along with Star Wars is so expansive that legitimately any news is good news at this point. I think, honestly, even a change in leadership, people would turn their eyes back to it. You know what I mean? They'd be willing 100%. to give it a chance. I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't be willing to, but I know I'd be one of them. If there's a change in leadership and we start hearing, hey, I understand that we've had some, uh, you know, some problems in the past. We're going to work to fix those things. Let's start telling some good stories. I'm going to give it a shot. You know, right. I still love Star Wars. Man. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually think because they attached apparently Bo Mil Willeman to the James Mangold movie. I'm more excited now for the James Mangold, you know, Dawn of the Jedi movie. I, I've long said and, the Jedi movie was the best idea they had in years. Yeah. So Isn't I think that's doing that one? Gonna, I think that's no, certainly no. going to come out no, okay. before the, the Ray movie will. I, 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 I'm up all about it. Anything My man. is tied to. My man. Raider. Doesn't, Doesn't say a word. Just fast. flaps that thing on the table, drags it across, spills all the glasses. For sixty-one seventy-three, doesn't say a word. Why didn't you say anything? Do why, a why, call. Well, I have a too. question. I have a Look, question. You know what has to happen right now, right? Wait, wait. Is there a relevance to sixty-one seventy-three? What is the relevance? I was trying to figure out it's there. It's the right? X-wing tax. Again, what's the X Wing tax? Tax? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, tax, tax. Well, look who it is. Hi. What's up? Bonjour. How's it going? 30k. What's up? going on with your mic? What's wrong with it? Oh, there it is. You're back. She's good. Oh, I was like, come on. I always have issues. <laughs> again. Yeah, no, you're good. Not again. Should we do this or is this too much? I think this is good. This Looks is nice. good. Yeah. I'll be right back. I gotta get new All right. So, what was the question, Rismond? My question was, is there a relevance to 6173? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> my brain's working at a thousand miles an hour. Uh, no, honestly, I, I do think a change in leadership would work better than just basically, you know, absorbing it into a different company and saying, well, you know, we'll make Star Wars theme stuff. 
maybe actually crap now that i say that out loud that might be the best thing less eyes on the project might mean a better product well e either way you look at it whether they replace her with a new boss or they don't it comes down to who is creatively running the show you know and what are they doing you know is it still feloni is there something else going on you know is it another designate it, it, to me it has nothing to do with kathleen kennedy kathleen kennedy is not a creator <laughs> kathleen kennedy is just the no. one who's been who's been controlling the money and trying to make sure you know whatever they do is profitable in in the in in the way that they that they do the numbers but so for me i'm like okay so she's gone and bergman takes over whoever okay fine who is creatively running the stories I that think wicked, wicked virtue great. should. We need a feminine touch over there, Lucasfilm. What do you think? I got it. I can handle it. I think I could do better than Kathleen. So you know, uh, there's I'll all this stuff. There, there's all this stuff going on about female representation. I mean, I, I really don't know where it, we don't talk about it because I would make the females hot and feminine. So that's one plus. That's a good start. I, I wouldn't mind that. But how do you feel about all this? You're you're a girl. Do you feel more represented? Do you identify more Star Wars now than you did before? No, not at all. They they make them all dumpy and boring. Why is that cool? That's not cool. The stories it's suck. The it doesn't matter. Suck. The story the stories suck. It doesn't matter if they're a female stories or dude story. The stories suck. Yeah. You need to make less. I out, I, honestly, I can't give any good takes or any take at all on recent Star Wars. I checked out after Obi Wan. That's Girl. it. Girl. I, I haven't that. watched anything, so sorry. Be right back. <laughs> wow, I wish I lived in that world where I hadn't watched Mando 3. I didn't watch uh, Andor because it's Star Trek. So, I heard that was like yeah. kind of, was that the one that people said was kind of like okay? Maybe not. Yes. Yes. And, Andor, yes. was, <laughs> Andor is the best thing they've done. Andor is the best thing they've done. Oh. Well. And then, of course, uh, what's the new thing? Um, the video game outlaws yeah that's just it's gonna people be people aren't very excited about that it's expensive too don't you have to pay to get like uh popular characters like the dlcs and stuff yeah right? so they've got they've got a d a uh a new another mission high uh hidden behind a paywall Good which job. isn't Good new you know, a lot of this stuff is being reported on like it's new they they Video has been doing this for like six, seven years. Well, now. And, and Ubisoft, Ubisoft, like yeah. they were like the pioneers of this bullshit. Ubisoft right? and EA, <laughs> they're, yeah. they are very good at it. Yeah. Um, and then Activision put will put stuff on one console that they won't put on the other one. It's there's nothing new. And the the part that gets me that a lot of people are reporting on is the the fact that they have that you have to download the game. You have to use the internet to download the game. Every AAA game in the last yeah. decade, ever since the uh, last, previous consoles came out, you had to download the game. And you had to use the internet for that. Yeah. So there's nothing new. It's annoying as heck because you used to be able to just go buy the disc and put it in and play it. You didn't have to wait nine hours to download the game. Well, and, and not only that, but I mean, the, the biggest soundbite that we've seen about this game is... You know, it already costs 70 bucks. Just the base yep. game costs 70 bucks. And then if you want to have, there's an extra Jabba mission. So again, and this is another one where, you know, the creators had to come out later and be like, well, you still get Jabba. You still get Jabba. Jabba's still Bob. It's part of the story. You, you still get it, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't get that extra little, that extra special mission of Jabba. You don't get it unless you spend at least 110 bucks. So another 40 and bucks, and 130 bucks for, for the season pass. Um, right? And season pass for a single player minutes. game is wild. Or is <laughs> that just me? No, it's a, That's a really game. nice way of saying it. My way of saying it is bullshit. Yeah. Like well, they did it with, um, believe it or not, this is not the first Ubisoft one they've done it with. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite games out there, freaking uh, Avatar Frontiers yeah. of Pandora had a season pass. It's been out yeah. for how many months now? No it's DLC. October? No DLC, nothing. I'm still waiting, dude. It's just, it seems crazy to me that that you would basically tell people, we finished the game, 
But if you want all the stuff we made, you're going to have to pay more than that. But, but I will I will say this is another great example of how the internet space, how the YouTube space, how everything that we're doing caused them to actually come back out and 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 mm -hmm. do an interview that says, yeah. listen, I've heard the I, I've heard the, the, the actual fucking creator guy. He's like, he's like, yeah, I'm here to say yeah. I've heard the feedback. Everyone gets Java. Everyone yeah. gets Java, mm -hmm. but. You get the extra special job of business if you do the DLC, a peace and love, right? But the only reason why he did that is because it all went off the rails and it all went yeah, off the rails. Yeah, you shouldn't be stumbling over your, you shouldn't be stumble over, stumbling over your winky before the game even comes out, trying to, you know, back explain stuff. It's 100%. like, dude, seriously? I don't they know. did that. They just did that, right? Nickel like, and dime. Like, let me nickel and dime. Yeah. Get and called the, out and then backtrack all that work they did unnecessary. On a single player game, that's the crazy part. I understand on a live service game. Okay. So take something like Helldivers, for example. Totally makes sense. Where you put a game out, which they did, we paid for what we got. And then they said, this is a live service game. So as this game progresses, if you want to do more stuff, you can pay for more stuff. You don't have to. There's no problem. You're not going to be able to not play if you don't buy our stuff. That's fine. For me, that makes sense. A season pass for that makes sense, like Rocket League or any of those games, you know, stuff's always going to be coming out. A single player narrative game, and you're like, you have to pay more if you want the actual full base game that we made, and then we have a season pass for you to get more stuff as it comes along. That but, just seems insulting to me. But the beauty of Helldivers, the beauty of Helldivers 2 is the fact that you don't if you don't want to if you want to just grind it you can you don't have to pay extra money to get the uh i forget what they're called the premium uh currency you find yeah. it in game you find 60 credits in game so play yeah. you know 25 missions a month and you don't need to spend actual money i i'm not a gamer never proposed to be but 130 dollars for a game for any reason at all that's wild i'm like i know what kind of a lego set i can get for 130 dollars and i'm there all day long <laughs> by, by the way uh, 130 dollars yep. for a fucking video game get out of here may 1st yeah. through the 5th is the uh lego deals and you get the uh troop transport yeah for every 160 dollars you spend yeah but 130 dollars for a video game even 70 bucks i know for some folks 70 bucks is a very nice yeah but, but games so games have always been that like 60 70 bucks when i in 1996 or whatever it was when i got super smash bros 1997 i don't remember what it was it was 70 bucks for the cartridge so that price hasn't changed so much it's the other stuff that's driving me nuts right now and what's happening is that well i mean ea got in a whole bunch of trouble for that what i'm what i'm starting to see and what i'm really hating is that they're slowly reducing what the base game is and starting to expand what the upgraded content is and so essentially what they're doing is they're making the base game so small it's not worth buying and increasing the gold version or whatever to make you buy it and you, then you actually get the full game yep. Yeah, because so is it a, is it 130 including all the DLCs or do you pay yeah. 130 for certain ones and then you got to so, pay more so for one, extra one, stuff? 130 like includes the season pass for a hundred and for the bare bones 110 bucks. You can get the gold version that gives you yeah. all the DLCs and, and it avoids you from that from that season pass business. So I don't know what the difference is because again I'm not a gamer, but even 110 bucks seems like a hell of a lot of money for a so, fucking. It's a lot of money. This this all really started back in like, I think it was 2015. 2K put out a, a uh, like super edition of their NBA game with Shaq on the cover. It was supposed to be this huge edition. You get like these 80 different uh, past athletes that you've never been able to play as before. And it was like $170. And it was asinine. But people bought it. Mm. Yeah, of course. And so everyone realized, oh my God, we can do like three or four different versions. I mean, there used to be the game, and then you you would buy a collector's edition that mm. might be like a steel book, might come yeah. with a little cool little map. That's yeah. what Skyrim did. Yeah, for good the first physical three media or four. stuff. Yeah. yeah, physical yeah. media. It's worth it, right? I think it is. But the these are it. digital downloads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like you know, I so 
they uh, Ub- not Ubisoft, Bioware did the uh, legendary edition of Mass Effect, and I bought the huge edition, 160 bucks. So it came with a helmet, came with like maps and shit. It was gonna be cool. And then, it, but what I didn't realize until like a day before it released was down there at the bottom was a little asterisk that said "does not come with game." Yep. It didn't so come I, with a game. Yeah. So I canceled it. It just paid thirty five dollars for the for the actual game. We could, if we could just if we could pipe down a little bit. We all want Listening. everybody to get a chance to talk on the panel. So <laughs> oh, do you oh, think? Oh. Do you think this? I haven't seen gameplay of it. Does Does it look? good like the graphics and everything because i remember yes, the I graphics played, is good the graphics I do, yeah. I, okay yeah. well that doesn't make it which, worse that i was just wondering i better. haven't played a star wars game but i watched some gameplay of the one i don't remember what it was called with the redheaded guy yeah and i remember uh, thinking that, thinking that, order or that it wasn't fallen order that it wasn't that great like there was a, a part in a cave and the top was just like not there like of the cave and it was like yeah huh. so jedi fallen order good. came complete good. Jedi Fallen Order came complete. It was a it was a great game. I loved it, and I was super stoked for Survivor to come out. I bought Survivor, and it was literally like playing a beta. Mm. Well, we both was it Survivor. The, is that like, the one I'm talking about? I don't yeah, know. That's that's the, that was the newest is. one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, X Wing. Okay. We both bought the like hundred and thirty dollar edition of Survivor. Stupidly, wanted, I did. Yeah, yeah. but they we were also offering like, like the how, they were how offering, much? Like, you pay? It was it was probably like hundred thirty bucks. It really probably was. Yeah. Whoa. Well, I, was I wanted, I wanted like, you know, three day early access. Yeah, like, I was excited for this shit. And then, but they also had, if you remember, it was like two hundred and ninety nine bucks, and it came with a lightsaber and a hard case, oh, and oh, yada yeah, yada no, yada. Yeah. And then the yeah. people got the sabers, and the sabers like didn't work. They were complete God. trash. They were like the thick ones, like you get from Galaxy's Edge, just like absolute trash. I, it's just these people are unrelentingly terrible, terrible people. Uh, Clyde Dashing for ten says good night, congratulations, thirty k. Thank you, brother. I think you got through that. I think I that's think actually I did what get it was. That. Congratulations. Yeah, take that. Yo, hang on, Jay, let's see if you can read this. <laughs> <laughs> He's not there. He's not, he's not even here. He's, 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 he's not reading that. This is your stream. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I already I humiliated myself on mine in front of a thousand people. So congratulations. Yeah. No, that's yeah. exactly what I how I would have said it too. Yeah, yeah. That's all you, buddy. Johnny Wingate. <laughs> what's up, brother? Hey, I'm stoked to see you here, brother. Good to see you, man. So yeah, I don't know. Look, the whole thing, the honestly, it's so funny how something so small can just kill a project for me almost immediately. The Oxalotl sidekick ruins this game for me. <laughs> really? Like, I'm sorry to be it's a picky still, guy, but the Oxalotl thing, like a it's just so irritating, dude. You know where that belongs? Fantastic Beast and where to find him. Oh, you're talking yeah, about Harry Potter. Yep. About- <laughs> Brian, they're going to sell toys. They're probably trying to do another uh, grow That's movie. All, dude, they thing. That's all they care about. Please, they want all that different kind of. I mean, I can understand using like the uh, commando droid. That's cool. He's kind of cool. I, I don't know if I understand the trench coat so much. It was a weird design choice, but the <laughs> well, Oxlade. The, the right. thing that was creepy when the when the first thing came out, they were shipping these two people. Well, well, well there, there's two different. Yes, so Caleb's on one thing, but just just yeah. to go back to the thing on her shoulder, the oxalot, right? Yeah. That that's her BD one, right? They they can't yeah. do BD one again, so they have to do this. But now, what Caleb's talking about is the droid with the abs and yeah, you know, they were shipping them. and they're yes. shipping and you know all this oh, stuff. I'm like, oh, you mean like a relationship? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You meant they were like I, I was using I was using that young vernacular. Yeah, I didn't know what the hell you were talking about there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, like that's my weird. blob. Raider. Raider. Gifted 10 X-Wing memberships. He earned it on this one. I'm sorry, Jay. You're just going to have to cover yours. Okay, earmuffs. Huh? Earmuffs. <laughs> Play it. Earmuffs, Jay. Earmuffs. And I must. clip. I forget. You're swear? I'm on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Keep it, keep it hands in business. Oh my God. Keep hands in business. I wasn't ready for that. I'm still getting that 13 cent check every single month from Haynes. <laughs> <laughs> Look who it is. <laughs> who the F is this? Who are these people? And why is this in my feed? I don't know. <laughs> I said to coach, I was like, what are you doing? I tried yeah. to get out of here as, as much as I could. It's been two months, but uh, we're still here. Raider, thank you so much for the 10 gifted subs. You are the most generous man on YouTube. We appreciate you and we love you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tanhauser Gate says, I find everything about the game awful. That little merch bait critter is the least bothersome. <laughs> So the problem for me is, you know, a lot of people have said we've always wanted ground to space, you know, uh, flight in a Star Wars game. Yep. Obviously, they did kind of like the most lowbrow version of that that they could, which is fine. I'm excited about that. Look, we'll we'll see when it comes out. The problem is, is that little oxalato is going to be with you the entire game. There's a lot you that's going to be bothersome about the game the way, with too. you the whole time. The whole time. It's going to get glitched out oh and stuck on a crate somewhere. And you're going to be like, don't go anywhere until you get Fluffy back. There's, I just know that. Definitely. Coming. So you know how there was the prison mission in Fallen Order where you got you know, kidnapped by a bounty hunter and uh -huh. escaped that person? There, you're definitely going to have to go rescue that thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and as we know, again, the biggest problem. On Cantobite. Well, uh, the whole thing is based in Cantobite. Which one's Cantobite? Oh, yeah. Cantobite's the Vegas that's that's the big yeah. the big guy that that you wouldn't understand you're trying to steal from if you had to figure out later okay fine but what it all comes back to is why isn't the bitch han solo right why why well, why so are we not right having an outlaws game where the bitch is han solo and you know what i mean when i'm saying this right why is han solo not why is it not han solo and chewy in this whole thing why is I it this? I don't know. Where it's 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 there's a reason. I have an answer I'm for this. I'm feeling like you're being very uh, anti-message and very like against modernity. And I am like, absolutely against modernity. I like, actually have an answer to this question. Wanna, people want to feel recognized. So, Star Wars fans around the world have been clamoring for some kind of game in the War of the Bounty Hunter space, right? So mm -hmm. we're talking about In Between Empire and Return of the Jedi. That's the War of the Bounty Hunters. We got everybody wants Han Solo, right? Yada, yada, yada. So he's in Carbonite right now. Right. They finally got the timeline right, and then they screwed it up. They're like, I'm just a mechanic girl from somewhere on Tatooine and I'm gonna go to Cantobite and show all these damn men how a real bounty hunter deals with stuff. It's like uh, right because in the first like 15 seconds of the trailer it's I have been discounted my entire life. Yeah. Oh of course. We get it. You're oppressed. We get it. We get it. She makes me depressed. I don't know. <laughs> Wicked Virtue's gonna love the game. She's gonna be like oh I totally I'm so know invested. I know how yeah. that feels. And, and the sad thing for me is because I'm not a game player, I want to know about the story. Right. For me, it's all about the story bits. Yeah. And is there anything in here that's it's gonna be canonical because that's just we do now, because the games count and whatever. Oh fuck me. But but is it is it interesting? <laughs> right? Is it is it something is it something that we need to know about because they're they're doing stupid things to connect other things together and i'm like i'm like this game doesn't even interest me for the story part of it what if they do this is she han's bastard child oh god and i would say they would never be brave enough to do something like that but if you'll remember a quaint little movie from not too long ago uh lando's droid lover was injected <laughs> into the millennium falcon is now the reason why that ship is special Wait, which one was that? The the solo movie? I didn't, solo. I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember his little sex bot, and then they shoved then, her consciousness uh, uh, into the Millennium Falcon, and I'm like, that ship's ruined forever for me now. <laughs> and the uh, what you call it, the Imperial theme playing. Yeah. At the uh, <laughs> at the customs. Uh, I'm by myself. Han Solo. Oh, I know. I know you hate. I know you hate it. I know you hate the Han Solo thing. I know you hate it. Right, but this. Somebody was in a writer's room. It was like, this is great. This is great. This is great. Listen, you, that that movie would be even worse than it was if it wasn't for Ron Howard. So God fucking bless Ron Howard for giving I'll us the best that. version of that movie that. we could ever get. By the way. <laughs>
I, I, I just can't even believe that. I still can't get over that movie. And everybody's like, bro, you're way too hard on Solo. I'm not. I'm not hard enough on Solo. That movie was such utter, undisputed crap. Oh. I literally can't get it off my chest. I've tried for years and years and years but it's to so absolve myself of the it's sin so that is Solo. Better than the sequel trilogy. The saddest part as about all this is the solo, solo is still the second best thing Disney Star Wars did in movie wise. Oh, movie wise, yeah, yeah well, movie that's not saying a lot. No, right, but even okay, even still, it's probably it's still probably in the top five of everything across the board that's the sad part <laughs> what's up culture but also what's his name's also i love what i would i would so, venture to say, yes yes i would put um the force awakens in front of solo no no sir no yeah sir. No, i yeah. think it depends on how you look at the force awakens mm -hmm. see when i when i think of the force awakens i just think about like it doesn't bug me as much that it was basically just a new hope redone that's why it's better than solo the, the it's because thing, it's a new hope i mean it's a the, crappy reboot of a new yeah, hope but it's a new but, hope oh it, it's, be, it's better about, because they just ripped off another story that's better for you what i think about then the solo that, yeah solo was better than force awakens bro how, how many of us let's get a vote sat in let's get a vote in the chat like, actually let's do that waiting. let's get a vote on the chat people in the chat never seen solo i'm the only one that seen so let's see what the, the, the chat's got to say about all this middle. here nobody's seen it oh shut up Davio. what's uh what does that one guy say i don't believe you <laughs> do, do you remember how to run a uh poll you know what it's been a while <laughs> It's been a couple months. I could, I could do without all the negativity, okay? The, no. the guy to my right, no. the girl no. below you, definitely, they know how to do it. So I Wait, can you guys know. run polls? I, I you're moderators? No. no. Not, not as a moderator. Oh, I was just going to Then say take that. a seat, young Skywalker. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, okay, I'll take that. Shit, I'll take that. If, if if I was an editor or a manager on the channel, I could do it, but not as a moderator. I love how I'm King's always so excited Skywalker. about everything. Uh, force Thank really you. <laughs> I live most of my life. I live in a pretty happy world. I'm really That's interested great. to see how this goes, dude. I, and and now you're in 2024, where there is no happiness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of let's be let's be honest. I kind of live in my own world. So uh, we know, we know, Kelly. We know. Do I have to be on YouTube to see this poll? Yep. Yeah. Um, that's, that's kind of how the polls work in YouTube, Caleb. Yeah, I, just well, I, 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 I thought, thought, I, might, on YouTube I, thought I might be able to see it on uh, on StreamYard. <laughs> Not on StreamYard. No. I saw Solo and all I got was a lousy T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's a funny thing for me because I remember seeing Solo in the theater. Did, did on the panel? Did anyone else see Solo in the theater? Am I the only no. one? Yeah. No, I saw it. Yeah. Never I saw seen it. it. Never I like the idea. I, Wicked I never seen the it boycott. at all. I didn't see it I, at all. I, no. I can't vote. Not, not even one time, like zero times. Mm -mm. Nope. They, they could have made like six changes and fixed that movie. And it would have been six, six exactly. Did you take notes? Like change this? There, there should be like, more than that. Really really change two or three things. Than, like, and that's a fine movie. What is going on with this? What 35 else? votes, 60% say solo. Solo is better. The better. And, and by the way, what I was going to say is, you know, the sound design. Next the, week's the so sad. Cinematics and all the things that Ron did when he came in to save the movie, those were all great, right? Solo directly screws with the original trilogy on multiple yeah. occasions. Multiple yeah. occasions. It yeah. makes the original trilogy worse on multiple occasions. I don't think Force that. Awakens is just a rehash. We I don't get really anything counselor. with the the original oh, trilogy yeah, until true. we get Luke at the end, but he doesn't throw the lightsaber until the next one, right? So, so, no, so Last what, Jedi what are, doesn't count there. What, what are your ways, other than his last name, what are your what are the things that you feel like Solo screws with in you the original trilogy? You destroyed the legacy of one of the greatest ships in Star Wars. Okay, yeah, 100 no, not, you got not that. one you of the greatest that. ships. The greatest ship in Star Wars. Why, why is it? Is the Kessel Run, the whole Kessel Run business? No, it's the ship. It's the L3 in the... As the L3 being the reason oh, and a rebellious not, uh, sex so robot's we're consciousness still, we're still was projected into we're the Millennium still not Falcon. over the droid. Okay, I get it. I get it. But what, okay, but what, I'm 
I'm a hundred percent with you so far on L3 being the reason that the Million Falcon ran did the Kessel runs in 12 parsecs. What's the other issues? Solo getting his last name. Okay. Oh, okay. he's not he's never gonna be over it. He's never gonna be over that. Give us give us a real reason. Give us a real reason next one. That was pretty uh, L3 bad. is a real reason. Dude, Solo, <laughs> Solo's last L3 name was like one of the shittiest, um, excuse my friend, one bad. of the crappiest things I've seen in Star Wars. But, so that but, was like. But, no, I, 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 let me re, let me rewind. the kiosk. No, no, I, the I, Darth I, Vader music for a promo was pretty yeah. dumb. No, I get, I get you, but you said it ruins the original trilogy for reasons. That's what I'm waiting for. So okay, far, Millennium you know, Falcon flying movie. around, yep, and they're yep. like, don't worry, it's the fastest ship in the galaxy. Yep, and I'm sitting yep. there, and I'm like, oh, yeah, because why? Because L3 is fucking awesome? Yep, number yeah. one, you got it. What else? So what you're saying is you feel like you feel like it's screwed with the original trilogy because the only reason why he did the Kessel Run was because of L3 was embedded? No, I don't think it was L3 in it when they did the Kessel Run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Would, would, then, yeah. Then, yeah. She dies. Okay. Well, then there's planet. reason number well, two. Just, I, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. You're like, tell me why you feel there you like go. That's my two the reasons. original trilogy. That's my two reasons. Yeah, no, um, L3's, other than that, L3's inclusion in the in the Million Falcon destroys a lot of the lore and awesomeness of the Million Falcon. Yeah. But that's the only big also, like, Oh my God! About hey, let's not forget Lando likes doing robots, so big so, problem with Lando's character there. But that doesn't have anything to do with the original trilogy, right? That just goes it, back to your hatred. Was Lando of not in the original trilogy? He was, but he doesn't yeah, like. Has, are you starting clearly, to now? Hey, are you hey, now starting to think about out Lobot and what clearly, he was doing with Lobot? Clearly, on, on he City? grew out of it because he wasn't Lobot flirting was with C three PO. He was flirting was with uh, Leia. So, Lobot was not a droid. Right, so I you said it, oh, it ruined the original trilogy for reasons, and I all I, all I hear is oh you don't God, like L three. I'm, I'm just Rizman waiting here. to hear why it ruined. This so, brings I, up a really good point here. Some of the awakens <clears throat> gets killed like a bitch. Some of the things um, that I don't like what they do in movies uh, when they do these origin stories or trilogies, it takes away at least for me, it takes away like that wonderful mystery that comes with you know we did the castle run like stuff like that you didn't need to add that it was kind of like something cool that star wars fans always talked about how fast this ship was what it could have been like things like that and so it's like it adding adding the robot that's now part of the falcon the way that they did the castle run how solo got his last name how they took a john williams darth vader theme and thought it would be funny to put it in a promo for you know join the empire it was just kind of like that was kind of silly um and it's like you take away some of the beautiful mystery of these films that that i don't know that we love because now it's like well that's how it happened so now you got to be you, now you're stuck with that the card game between Hansel and Lando, how he won or how he won the falcon i i wish they had not touched that because it's just more like it's just like this lore that they had that just kind of like um I can understand the Sabak game though. Like the Sabak game's kind of got to yeah, be there cuz it's Lando, Lando on you Lando have to do the Sabak. I'm just saying game. it's me. Like I I love the fact that they just talked about it. Yeah. And we and we can just in our own minds figure out how that looked. <laughs> when they when you make an origin story, it's just like yeah. that's that's how it is in stone now. Well, so there's I no mystery. There's no mystery. Be so i, I would have preferred to see they destroyed the, the suspense of disbelief yeah that i guess that's what i was looking for well suspense you know, of belief there's the whole thing about uh you know he's got the red stripes on his pants and yeah. it only like you only get those if you survive like a freaking awesome you know mission that's that's what i think solo should have been should it should have been the story about the pants which is a silly way of phrasing it but that movie would have should have been, awesome. been a story about Han. Yeah, I don't not, feel like it was. Yeah, I mean the other thing is too. It's like it's weird that they threw in Darth Maul at the end just for like, hopefully like, it, it was almost like that was a hail mary to see if that would stick yeah. and bring more people yeah, to sure the theater <laughs> to watch. Um, yeah, the the Darth you, Maul thing, Jay. I agree with you. The Darth Maul thing was bullshit. And so like now that meatball is just hanging out there. 
Yeah. <laughs> and now they've got is, is it Kira? And Nerky picked it up. Is it Kira supposed to be in Outlaws? Dude, Kira, did so, that come out? Know, the he other is in Outlaws. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It, it just doesn't look anything like Amelia Clark. Yeah, well, no, Kira, that's Kira, Kira and Doctor. That's are, not um, her. The one of the one of the table is not Kira, but she is in it later. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kira and Afra wound up getting together in the comics, and Afra single-handedly takes down Darth Vader. Like, fuck off. Was, wait, Afra, the the chick that's everywhere now. In right? the comics, yeah, she's uh, she's done she's, everything. Uh, she tried yeah. to capture Luke Skywalker. Yeah, yeah. All that separate. It's, a lot. it's just Afra. like, yeah, it's just it's, <laughs> that, that, it was just kind of weird because like Maul was just sitting there, and then he's like. Grass light was like, yeah, like what? I just really like the point of... Stupid. It was just pretty stupid. Have you so, seen really I think it was a bait. So, like, if you're in the middle of a trilogy or something, or like even Marvel movies where you know you're gonna make a bunch more, yeah. it makes sense. You're teasing the next thing, right? right. Where's my mall movie? Yeah. They just. I'm telling you. Boy. Are you sure you they, want they, it? They need to have a they need to have a meeting with Star Wars and just cancel all productions and just say uh, we're going to focus Over. on a million years in the future or a million years yeah. in the past. We're going on hiatus and just just new characters, new sure. stories. Time to uh, and, and they can the do it really cool. They could do it cool where it's like no one's been using the force for a thousand years and they don't understand it and it's like people can like rediscover it in a new way and yeah. maybe find old jedi texts from way back when like it, it, they could just Secret do that in such, a, in such a, a way of discovery that um you know they could have just kind of started over i guess that, i guess they were trying to do that with ray but it was just so close with the timelines were just so yep. close like and then the, the emperor was the bad guy it was completely stupid but it's just, like I feel like it's so simple to me in my brain okay to still tell thousands of hours of storytelling within the skywalker yeah. timeline i mean it's so simple you can literally do an incredible movie about maul being found as a baby by palpatine played by michael fassbender as a young man he finds baby maul and then trains him up and it's all the story of maul becoming a sith like it's Wah, that's easy. It's dark. It's brutal. I need more. Right, get away from there. You want to know why that doesn't work? Why? Where's the conflict? Get away from that. They haven't line, been man. seen for a thousand years. Where's the conflict? Same problem. Same problem they have with uh, acolyte. Yeah. A Sith has not been seen for a thousand years, and Yoda's the one. Yoda's the one that says it. So yeah, because he's, he's gonna alive cover during acolyte. He's he going to cover know. it up, bro. He's going to he's going to cover it up. We're going to see him covering it up in the Acolyte. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, what is that? So what hey, does that do? What, does that, somebody, what does that do for Yoda? Does that make him, like, a bad, bad guy now? Well, if you do. You yeah, have Yoda. Yoda always, group. But, but Yoda has always been sus, right? If you think about, if you think about our experience ah. with Yoda from the prequels Hush and then mouth. later on in the original trilogy or vice versa... He's always been a little sus in what he discloses. And so you think he knew? That. Yeah. This is the uh, fifty-two-year-old man using the word. Brisbane's an acolyte simp. The stream is over. No, a hundred percent. I think I think Yoda knew or thought he knew exactly or what fell. he was doing, and part of the reason why it all fell apart, and we get the Yoda experience we got in Revenge of the Sith, is because he was like. God, I fucked this up the whole time. I was like, I, I didn't. I thought I did, but I didn't. And, and I'm like, and I didn't get Palpatine when I needed to. And I'm like, I'm like, this is a disaster, right? And 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 he, I think he and Obi Wan are the two architects of the disaster Stop. of Stop. the Jedi Order. And I've said this before, and I will continue to say it. They are the ones we should blame for fucking it up. They fucked it up. Big time, over and over and over. There is again. one thing that th there's only one thing they should have done. They should have gotten Smee out of slavery. That's it. It's the only they thing. Up, if they, they had gotten Smee out of slavery, none of this happens. Bro, Kenobi knew it was. Palpatine's going on. not able to implant. Yo the Yoda dreams knew it was going on. They, they, they were just they were they fucked it up. They fucked it up. 
Also, what is Obi Wan Kenobi supposed to do? He's the Grand Master of the Order. Did you do you know like uh, Risma? Have you seen like uh, the new younger Star Wars fans? Like, uh, there's like all these like tweets out there about how much they hate Yoda because Yoda's like the bad guy. Yeah. Like they're like yeah, yeah they're just they're like they, they, they're all just like I can't stand Yoda. Like Yoda's the reason why we lost Anakin. You know, we could have kept Anakin and not Darth Vader. It's Yoda's fault for all the Yoda wants Luke to kill Anakin because it's Yoda's fault that we have Darth Vader. It's like I'm reading all this stuff. I'm just like, this is wild, man. Like these. Did they new not Star watch Wars the original trilogy? They probably don't yeah. watch any of it. Like, dude, I think Yoda Yoda knew. That had to happen. I'm just telling you, I, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like these younger yeah. Disney Star Wars fans that grew up with the Disney, when they're watching this stuff and learning about like watching the other things, yeah. they're sitting there like, Yoda's the, the the terrible one of this whole bunch. This is all his fault. And reading reading these threads <laughs> of like, yeah, it, we would have, we would have, like there was one thread that were like, Yoda robbed us of pure god anakin you know that could control the light and dark together yoda robbed us of all that he's the one to blame he should have been the one that got thrown down instead of the emperor it's like crazy stuff I'm like reading this like man i never had those kind of conversations with my star wars friends uh friends you know about like yoda it was like when i saw yoda ignite that saber in attack of the clones we were all like <laughs> well, and once again once again this shows this shows the dichotomy and the ruin of Disney Star Wars because you've got fans who don't understand that the story of Star Wars was good versus evil. Yeah. And now they think you can be both good and evil. No, you can't. Well, it took Mace Windu and they gray. ran for the fences it's, it's, with it. It's gray, right? It's gray, man. Which is gray bullshit. Day. Wait, does Rissman feel the same way about Yoda? Like, he, that's how so, he feels. So, so it's funny that you said that all the things you said, Jay, they're like, I'm like, I'm like, they they're indicting Yoda to me for the wrong reasons. Okay. Right. Right. I, I again I, I've been on record and I will continue to be on record that the fall of the Jedi Order is the fault of both Obi-Wan and Yoda. Right. But not for the reasons you mentioned, right? Because because they they thought they were doing what they needed to do and they were they thought it they were managing it and all these things were happening. They and lost control. And, totally lost control yeah right and and the blinders were on and they thought they were in the right lane and they were not even close right and everything that was happening they facilitated it wasn't because they wanted to right it wasn't because you know they were like you know oh i'm gonna you know they they, they were it the the things that happened happened because they just thought they were doing the right things and that's the point the point of the whole story is people who think they're doing the right thing can still not do it, right? It, it, it can still go off the rails. That I think that's what George was trying to tell us. The path to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Right? Literally, it, like, just go open a history. Well, that's, what, that, that's one of their arguments, too, is that Yoda's a freaking coward, man. If he really believed that the Emperor needs to be stopped, he would have risked his whole life. He's just like, well, I, I kind of got knocked up, so I'm just going to leave. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That fight needed. We, the fight I'm just saying, like, it, it's I interesting. It, 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 to me, it's just interesting to read. Like, it's like, okay, they're, they're seeing, like, I never had that conversation with, you know, back in the day. Like, we, it was, uh, it, it just was different star wars talk i guess I, I, I love revenge of the sith i still think the yoda palpatine battle should have been different that i still think it should, it should have included the longer version of mason's fight 100%. yes and, and by uh, the way, we gotta hit a super chat really quick here oh there you go do rag vance for 4.99 says solo was a good star wars oh, we don't have to read that one no, no, read it. I, okay, fine. Solo was a good Star Wars movie for all the things that went wrong with it in production. Sorry, I don't make the rules. My knee cuss. I know what he was trying to say. Uh, we're not going to do that. Oh, and yeah. I, I just want to oh, be clear. I just, I just want to be clear because I see a lot of feedback in the chat. I blame if I have to blame someone for the fall of the Jedi Order. I blame Obi Wan Kenobi. Hundred ways, every way. 
hundred percent, it was Kenobi. It was Kenobi who facilitated and continued to bring it all down. And that's why I'm like, yeah, he should feel a little guilty because it was him. It was a hundred percent Kenobi. Man, could you imagine if we explored that in the Kenobi show? Hashtag Brisbane shit takes. <laughs> no, everyone's like, it's my shit take. And because we romanticize Kenobi because of the Clone Wars, because of. No, we don't. Team. Yes, we, we do. We romanticize Kenobi because Alec Guinness played him. Well, well, that's an even worse reason to romanticize him. Right. I'm Dude, talking about. I, I'm Isaac with Harris. Rissman on this. I'm with Rissman on this. If he'd have paid closer attention to what Anakin was saying, because you got to realize this is a guy who was like out of his time, he was emotionally unstable. And Kenobi was so set in the ways of the Jedi Order. He's like, it doesn't matter what you're feeling. Be a Jedi. And the kid's like, I'm mad. I'm pissed. My mom is dead. Oh, everything is, you know, he's got the, you know, back in the temple. You can hear goth music blaring out of his room. And Kenobi <laughs> walks by. He's like, damn, teenagers. And, like, he's not paying attention, dude. He's not paying attention. Yeah, but because... It, no, he because is that's attention. how they've always done things for thousands of years and like yeah. even yoda said it in the prequels he's like yeah these 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 new batches man these new batch of jedi's got a little arrogance on them, yeah. a little different it's like uh, so, it keeps, uh and i'm thinking say, kenobi, like, kenobi you gotta understand apparent. too kenobi was robbed from his parents thrown right into her as if he was done everything right as a child he doesn't understand um probably doesn't understand like when they took anakin that was too old you know they were they were right about that like he's too old he's too attached to his mom he's too attached to this he's too attached to that like we that's why we snatch him you know when they're born <laughs> so they don't have any attachment well, uh so he didn't understand how to deal with that because he didn't he didn't get it and, and so. the biggest and, and one of the biggest things that kenobi could have done to fix this problem is he didn't he should have killed Anakin and Mustafar for Christ's sake. I mean, oh, really? I mean, dude, I would have left really? that guy. Where I am sure he uh, come on. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, he I'm was had both of his legs and his armor gone and he's on fire. I'm like, yeah, he he's knew, probably good. I, I'm with Rissman well, on that one. He, he knew he, he should have he should have he severed his head. Anakin's my all-time favorite. He should have severed his head. I, I mean, if just... anything, he left him there to suffer, too. Like, if he cared about him, he should have just put him out of his misery. That's the other thing, yeah. too. He's letting his friend... Maybe he would have lit on fire if he went down there. for a while and burn <laughs> just up. Just lay there. Yeah. Can, can I buy you give you 10 X-Wing memberships? You know what we have to see? You have to look at my butt one more time. I'm sorry. When you said clip, I forget I'm on the f***ing internet. Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Could you do it? If your friend had turned and you were watching him burning next to a lake of fire, could you walk up and just like not just millimeter to the head? Tap him in the head. You know what I mean? Like hundred percent. Nine millimeter to the head. He's dead. Now, okay. I'm, not, I'm never getting drunk with Risman ever. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not you didn't just kill all the Jedi that he's known. And I mean he did kill a bunch of enough. kids before that like I yeah mean, he kind of went off the rails bad. yeah he did go off the rails oh my a little God, bit. Just defended Rispin. Uh, what they should have done yeah and actually now that i'm thinking about it i'm starting to get on Rispin's oh, side whoa, here whoa, whoa, hold up okay okay we can't all be hopping over the wrist <laughs> culture if it was Rispin, yes <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> i always thought i always thought it was a dumb idea that yoda and obi-wan should have went to Anakin together. Yeah. And taken him out if they had to or try to change him. And then together could have went to, uh, you know, take out the Emperor. I don't know. I don't understand. the. Uh, or went to the Emperor first. The, you know? the problem with... Unless Yoda reason... just thought, if you show up, you're just going to get thrown out of a building and that's going to be the end of you. So the, the reason we're having all these conversations, not only is... The because we're talking we, about good Star Wars. We love Star Wars. But also, it, this is the fault of having half the story written and then going back and writing the first half. You've got to make sure that all that stuff can still happen. So that's, so you've got to have a way that 
Vader and Obi Wan had met earlier in Obi Wan One. So you, which is why Kenobi kind of fucks everything up. Pardon my French. Sorry, did I kill it? So we got a super chat from Doug B for ten dollars. <laughs> Star Wars Theory said that it was written somewhere, it may be comics, that the reason Obi-Wan left was because Palpatine was arriving in his shuttle. The comics but, canon with this, the movies, though? Yeah. They are? Every, are there some that aren't? But, they are until I'm pretty sure more. everything written yeah, after. Dude, so, okay, there used to be a phrase here at the Hangar Bay that was called, do your homework, okay? <laughs> that, was, that was a long-standing tradition. And also, hashtag comics aren't canon. But yeah, and hashtag enough, comics aren't canon. Enough. So... Yeah. That's a very blurry line. Um, essentially, with the comic stuff and with the books, you kind of pick and choose whatever you want to be your head canon. Essentially, <laughs> uh, because none of it is canon. None of it's canon. Um, you could have picked a thousand different reasons why Obi Wan walked away at the time he did, or why he didn't finish it, or whatever the case may be. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so Doug B for ten. Thank you so much, brother. Um, yeah, the reason why Obi-Wan left, you know, it's different in the book. It's different in the comics. It's different in the movies. You can pick whatever you want. That was kind of the most beautiful thing about Star Wars is that it left you open to think about what could have happened. That was yeah. the mystery that they used to leave in Star Wars. And you would create stories in your mind. It's called inspiring people. Um, that's oh, what yeah. Star Wars used to do. That's Call what me. I was trying to say. That was Thank my you, argument for the <laughs> origin <laughs> stories. For some people and you just wrote, wrote me off. Well, Why are you always complaining, just... Jay? Because no, I... I say the exact same argument, and you just write me out. You just like, <laughs> yeah. And then you come, and then you come out to try to sound smart by answering a super chat with the exact same thing that I just said like thirty minutes ago. Was, the good news I was, is, it's Jay is taking here. over the X Wing channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All of his ideas about Star Wars are the only ideas about Star Wars, and so now it's his channel. I literally said the same thing. <laughs> and when we were talking about Solo, when you were like, yeah, well, but... And I was like, okay. That's like that's why I don't like origin stories, because it takes away from what you just said. Yeah, the the idea of uh, of creating the own story in your mind. Yeah. <sighs> why, why is that a problem? I'm not allowed to say the same thing? You disagreed with me earlier. No. Yeah, it, it's, it's you true. did. It's true. The the kids don't like oh, it when no, mommy no, and daddy no. fight. It's, it's kind I'm of. I'm not fine. <laughs> he was problematic. I think we just had to get, we had to get rid of that guy. He was causing wow. a lot of tension. Wow. <laughs> wow. I disagreed wow. with you that we should keep you were disagreeing. You were disagreeing with me on my point with solo and you were just I think you were just so angry about something else that you didn't want to hear another You weren't listening. I, mean, uh, I do possible. that from time to time. I get in trouble. People yeah. like rebuttal an argument and I'm just so mad about what I'm talking about. I don't hear anything that I wasn't like, and I wasn't rebuttaling oh, you. I just God. said like my issue with solo is that they took away the mystery of all those cool stories we heard in the original. Like that yeah. was that was it. But but so. back 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 on the point of Kenobi and yeah yeah and oh, did you're he talking leave about Lando not leave? Yeah, I remember now right it's 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 exactly what we're supposed to think did did he leave because he had to go and 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 Palpatine was coming or or did he leave because he couldn't finish the job right for me I'm like he left because he couldn't finish the job right he should but but for other folks it's like I don't know well, he yeah. finished the job but you know. Palpatine was coming and blah blah, but that's so, I don't buy the Palpatine was coming. Left there's nothing, there's no beep, there's no droid popping up to say, hey, <laughs> ship on the horizon. I think he just walked away because he thought the job was done. I would agree. Do you, do you guys, yeah, I mean, you guys he, okay he, with I think he but I think he walked away because he couldn't finish the job. Are you guys okay with the fact that on certain some of these things you have to do homework? Like, can we not just enjoy them straight from the films? Well, that's like the... You know um, what I mean? Like, I can't stand that. I, I don't like, like that personally. I I think books and comics should complement uh, yeah. what was already... if they, Since since Star Wars wasn't started with books, it was started with a film. The comic books and the and the books should complement those films, not, at, like, not try to fill in the holes where they messed up. Like the whole thing in The Force Awakens... When freaking Leia didn't hug Chewbacca after Han died, just walked right past her like she wasn't even there. They they talked about that. Star Wars were like, yeah, we corrected that in this comic book. So buy this 
And if you buy this yeah, book, it's, we'll it's put cool. it. It puts the story all together, and then yeah. everybody's happy again. So that was the that was the whole running joke in the hangar bay about hashtag do your homework was it was so dumb that like you can't enjoy something ah, unless you saw okay. that one edition of yeah. that one comic when they clearly fixed it, and you're not a Star Wars fan if you didn't read that one comic. It's I like, think okay, I think hashtag do your you know homework. They, you know they <laughs> did that while, when I was covering the construction of galaxy's edge and we were all like what is batu what is the spy yeah. stuff who are these people like what is this place they came out with three books and seven i think it was seven or seven or six comic books that they wanted you guys to they wanted anyone to read before visiting star wars galaxy's edge so you have an understanding of where you are yeah so and I, I just was like that is the dumbest thing <laughs> like it's a theme park you ride roller coasters, eat ice cream, and whatever. That's it. You don't need to do homework to visit a theme park where you're paying $140 just to get in. The only like, reason what is I knew, that? The only reason I knew what Batu was was because the two separate books where Thrawn and Anakin meet up there, like, for a couple pages. They show up on Batu looking for Padme, and, and I was like, "Oh, Black Star Outpost." On, okay, I know that, but who the hell is going to know what that is? On one of the pod, <laughs> on one of the podcasts or articles, a uh, Batu was supposed to be in the Rise of Skywalker, mm. and that and people, uh, some higher ups were extremely upset that it was that that scene was cut out. Apparently, there was a scene where they go to Batu because they were going to use that to promote the land that it was in a movie. It probably so now they had too. to go and promote it in. Yeah. VR games, comic books. They had to rewrite the Thrawn trilogy to well, include Batu in it. They had to do all this stuff just to uh, make that town relevant. When they didn't even have to do that, they just could have made it Tatooine at that point. It's like it's 100%. not. Well, not a big you know, deal. I think I think there's just a so loud. I, I just I, I turned her volume <laughs> down. I tried to get. I tried to. I don't know. I'm just letting you guys talk. I yeah, think there's a difference between what. I don't want to be full screened. What do I You're think about a streamer. what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I do think I think about a... what? You guys are talking about a lot of stuff. Yeah, I know. We're kind of flying a lot of the stuff. You're all I, over. I don't know. I don't know, I I don't know how deep you are in the Star Wars stuff. Uh, the, the, so I the like difference the originals, the, the, the prequels and the originals. I don't like the Disney stuff. She's I a Buffy watching... the Vampire Slayer person. If you, yeah, want, sure. if you so, talk so we're Buffy, talking about, she got you all day. We're talking about Star as Wars a franchise, stuff. as a franchise for an overarching story. Do you think it makes sense that people have to read books and comics no, not for at the all. movies to make sense? That's stupid. Just or like for your theme spent, park they, to make they, sense? They, yeah, they dumb. started with. I mean, if they would have started the franchise on comic books, okay, sure. But they started it with the films. And I also agree that they need to just leave the old stuff alone. Like they ruined Boba Fett diving deeper. And he was a mysterious, cool character. And they ruined him with the show. I mean, you can still enjoy old Boba Fett, but the new stuff was just ridiculous. Um, not a fan of the new Star Wars stuff. I just watched the old stuff. Well, and I'm kind of in both camps where I'm like, I I think it makes sense. Like, let's assume Ahsoka's a good show. I know that's going to take a big leap. Let's assume it's a good show. I don't think it's out of the ordinary to say, hey, if you want to be like, if you want to know who Ahsoka is and be like ready for all this, you should probably go watch this. But there's a big difference between asking people to go watch something and telling people they have to go read books, which let's be honest, yeah. you know, watching a TV show is easier than reading a book. Yeah. Um Nobody wants it's, to. Even like yeah. big fans aren't going to want to have to study to learn about the characters, and especially when it's all to 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 have a good time in a hotel room that's yeah. six grand a night. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Um, I don't I don't understand the theme park stuff. Why they don't have the old characters? It's so dumb. I, I mean, we know, we know, why. and we know why, but it's stupid. Yeah, it's but dumb. that's the it's weird thing. thing. So that that's the thing is that. There's that land has no tie in to any what you would call established lore from TV shows or movies. The reason why people know Star Wars. I remember vividly as a child walking around the corner at Disney World and there's a freaking ad at sitting right there. I'm like, I know Star what that is. AT AT ad at whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you turn the corner and you're like, oh man. And you hear the John Williams music and you're like, I'm in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You walk into Galaxy's Edge and you hear some kind of weird stuff. You hear about a Ronto roaster. So I like, okay, all right, that's fine. You know, whatever. Pod race engine, cool. I know what that is. 
but there's nothing else really that brings you into the Star Wars universe. And again, you walk you walk into a trader and then they have gigantic fat lightsabers that look nothing like the stuff you saw in the movies. <laughs> there's this weird hot milk stuff that you can get with rum in it. Right. Like crap, uh, you know. There's no Luke. There's no Anakin. There's no Star Wars. There's no Star Wars. And the thing that's so annoying about this is, Jay, you brought up these new Disney Star Wars fans who are mm -hmm. what, 12, 13 years old. Who has the damn money? <laughs> yeah. We have the money. The f know. people who grew up and with prequels and originals. The pe the kids that grew up with the Disney trilogy, they don't have any money. That's why so no why aren't they placating us? It's, That's what's annoying. It's That's weird. Now, they they could have they could have made the land or whatever, or have a drink. and then they could have easily the books could have been in a you know like a special thing for for fans. It's like, hey man, here's like a side story when Han Solo showed up. Don't it's not really mixed into the lore. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just uh, we were on a mission and we did we stopped in Batu. Like they could have done stuff that complemented the land, not say you got to read it or you won't understand what's going on here. You won't understand this. You won't get this person. Why this spy is here? It's like it's just weird. Uh, and no other place in Disney World does that. Like you go to like mm -hmm. Cars Land, you see cars, you see oh, the movie. I, I've got to go to Toontown. Imagine walking into Frontierland, Frontier Land and you're like, "This attraction only makes sense if you read the Frontier Land comic." Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, it, and the, the the whole thing about that too is, unless you want to understand why Vi is there, Who? the rest of it doesn't Who? matter. Vi, Vi, Vi is, is the, the spy with the that they bear. want you to find. Never what? heard of him. She, she's like the, the spy she. of Batu. She's the, she's the whole, but but again, she's the diversity hire. She's a black woman with blue hair. Blue hair. No, yeah. are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't see her when I was there. Is she like walk around the park? Well, oh my gosh, yeah, she she does. Does. she's in, she's in the spot. comic books and everything. No, uh, I'll, I'll bring. I'll show you. But 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 you I didn't you, do his homework. You all were actually making my homework. <laughs> You're making this is what we're work. talking about. Hashtag do your homework. Which Do is, your homework. If you didn't know who Vi was, if you didn't read the comics, if you didn't understand any of the backstory of Batu, it doesn't matter, right? It, it there's no relevance to it. When you go in there, it's just like, okay, I'm in a I'm in a Star Wars adjacent kind of place. Adjacent. You know, there's the the Falcon is here, the Falcon is here. Some of the rest yeah. of it is, but you don't need it's to the know wrong who radar Vi dish. is. You know what I mean? You don't. You don't need to know who Vi is. You don't. The rest. It's. It's not relevant. So not only did they kind of try and force you into doing your homework, but if you don't do your homework, it doesn't matter because you have the same experience in the land either yeah. way. I have a Wait, question have, for y'all. Oh. So here, um, here we go. Before you, does, before you change the topic, Kings, because you've been drinking. Here it is. That's her. This is the yeah, book. Fine. Mm -hmm. So this is who you find at Galaxy's Edge. She's Leia's top spy. Yeah. She's in Batu. For some reason, they took a Hoth uh, winter suit flight jacket and made it a uh, hot desert planet yeah. jacket. So let okay. me let me share this screen. I should have just done it the other way. Here, By the way, if you, ever, if you ever encounter her in Batu, she's very nice. She's very yeah, absolutely. Nice. Oh, there she is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, look at there she is. She's very so nice. What, so she's just hiding? What you do is if you see her, you're like, oh, you're the spy. And she'll interact and like, if, if you have children, she'll give you a mission. And she'll go, if you see Chewie, say Bright Suns. It's the yeah. same mission. Yeah. And then if you see Chewie and you say Bright Suns, he shakes your hand. It's like, oh, you did something. So there you go. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, that's a SJW looking person. <laughs> and X-Wing just left. Right. <laughs> That's fine. That's again, but if you, if if we didn't just go through all of that, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> it's totally it not obvious. Jesus fuck. It, it doesn't. Well, of course. She's, she's even wearing the rebel symbol too. The safety yeah. orange. The terrible the rebel spy. Symbol. I just look. I, there, there. No, are, Rissman is still, correct. Rissman is correct. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There was a comment here that I really wanted to pull up that I just thought was hilarious, and I can't. While find you're it looking now. for that. It was um, it basically it said the one time that Disney doesn't go to Tatooine. Oh the yeah, the one uh, time that Disney doesn't go to Tatooine. It was, oh here it um, is. Mm -hmm. 
Perfect. It should have just been Tatooine. It, dude, most likely say support. Like, done. Easy. Everybody's happy. It bridges every single... It's... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> Why? You don't even have to spend that much money on structures because it's literally just domes and boxes. Like, you're done. That's it. Easy. Done. Nobody? Okay. Uh, Doug B for 10 oh, says, Matt said Stover's... it all. <laughs> uh, Matthew Stover's novelization of Revenge of the Sith is where theory cited Palpatine arriving. I don't understand how the canon works around that book. I'll tell you one thing. In that book, that book Anakin's uh, Anakin's uh, temple assault is incredible. It's That's really awesome. That's the one awesome. sticks the lightsaber up to the door. It's the yeah, it, it's part of the video game. Yeah, he knocks yeah. on the door and they open the door and he's like, oh, Master Skywalker. And he's... <laughs> It just puts it through his temple and drops him. It's oh, incredible. It's really good. I would highly recommend everyone read it. Yeah, but but it's not canon, right? So you can read the book, but it's it's not a canon book anymore. Well, so. It's hey canon. Psychotic Magus for two says until, until, until they hey, fill that the... spot, it's it can still be canon. Like it's, until it's, they head, until head we get a head, new. Head, head, Head canon is just another way to say it's something we would believe ourselves, right? But it's technically not canon. No, head, head canons head now canon, turn into what Star Wars should be. For Star Wars. Yeah. We were, oh my God, we went over two hours. I had a two yeah, hour stop remember, limit. Remember an hour and a half ago, you were like, oh my God, we blew through three topics that we weren't supposed to blow through i know yeah no oh, i had a two hours i have to i have topic? to take my baby my baby that topic <sighs> head and arms cannon oh like head shoulders knees and toes yeah. cannon cannon can okay got it yeah all right well hey look everybody thank you so much for being here this was a heck of a foray getting back in the mix uh never had uh over a hundred watching for almost two hours so thank you guys for being here uh well, chat I'll, I'll take that personally because we have had over 100 watching but not for two hours this has been a good one this has been a big one it's been a really good one um does anybody want to plug anything before we go about the podcast on monday history of pirates yeah history of pirates i was supposed to be wearing that hat tonight history of pirates <laughs> on monday um, catch me over there. We're going to be uh, talking about some history and some pirates over on Monday. Do we have a topic yet? Yeah, it's going to be our top five fictional Ooh, pirates. Top five fictional pirates. Uh, same kind of vibe. A lot of fun. We're yeah, just hanging out. Fun. talking It's going to be a lot of fun that day. Yeah, it's not, a, uh, it's not a stuffy place at all. So please go over to the History of Pirates. Subscribe over there. I'm there pretty consistently. Anybody else want to drop anything? Um. Not nice to have um, another late night. Appreciate the invite. I, it is you know, good to see Rissman. I have missed him. I was going to tell you guys. I you not long ago, Jay. Good to see you again. There is one thing I wanted to tell you guys, and it's the most important thing about the night. Hey. Even Wookiees need a little love. I mean, please have you never ever heard of Wookiees fantasy? Putting my pants back on now. Please don't. Stop unmuting yourself. He's trying to mute our mic. So we don't talk. <laughs> no, he's trying. With... <laughs> this is terrible. This is gay. This is the worst. Why are you doing this to us? I'm gonna say a game award to get it shut down. Call now at one nine hundred. I don't know why I try anymore. If I'm being honest with you guys, I don't really know. I don't really know why I try. But uh... actually, can I hold you by the waterfall? <laughs> it's all about having friends you care about. The only thing I want you to do is take what happened tonight and just believe in me believe i need you to believe my time has come you must continue your journey without me what what what, what are you what 
Master! You can't leave me! You must believe. Master!